But, but yeah, that's it. It was number five now. Hey, welcome uh, back <laughs> to the Metropolitan Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hi, I'm Patrick. <laughs> How's it all yeah. doing? It is that guy, yeah. Um, we are back with the Metropolitan Grid. It's May 3rd. It's a Thursday night. Uh, f- if you don't know, uh, Patrick has signed a very uh, a wordy document at this point. But lucrative, I think. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, agreeing to show up to the stream, I think we're saying first Thursday of every month. Right? Yeah. And there's 12 a year, so that's at least 12 pats a year, which is pretty hey, good. Great. Hey. Um, <laughs> so, Pat's here today. How's oh, it going, it's Raphael. Man? Look How's at that. Going? No way. Hey, Raph. Really? How's it going? <laughs> Get out. Yeah. Um, how's it going, Zach? What's up? Hey, Cluster Fox, how you doing? Kayak, how's it going? Rap, hey, yeah, it is rap. What's up, dude? <laughs> Thomas, also, what's up? I'm um, getting a lot of love in chat, Patrick. Ben P, human1011. Yeah, we. I rebound the mute button um, last week. I muted the stream. I put the mute button on the zero on okay. the number cat, mom pad. And if you've seen, like, most numpads, the zero's a real big number. And it's sort of like it's a real there right? between... You're using the arrow keys a lot when you play Netrunner and the mouse, and you just fly over that one and you shut sound down. I thought the zero was like a small key. On no, that's my a number pad is a small key. Um, hmm. So we're going to mute a lot less. It took me a while to figure that one out. Yo, puppy, that's what's up? Bad. Hope you guys having a good time. Um, yeah, we are so far. It's been like a minute. It's been good. Yeah, I guess so. Talaysan, how's it going? We, of... we're, we're definitely playing some lobsters tonight. I yeah. think your name's associated <clears throat> with that deck list, no? How are you doing? Also, Jim, how are you doing as well? Um, wildly off topic, Vasla, what's up? What did that intro graph? Who did? I did it. I built it. <laughs> so bad at words today. It's fine. Um, Sorry. Sorry. Uh, no criticism today. Special guest VK, how's it going? Um, I, I built that. We took the art directly off of uh, Matt Zellinger's website and I uh, pulled it apart and did some animations, which is pretty good. What's that object blocking the top right of the camera? Oh, that's a microphone. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. Sorry, dude. You okay? <laughs> did I just smash that to your teeth? <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I'm alive. Sorry, that's a mic. You got a bit afraid. This is a Patrick. Um, cool. Only scoundrels play lobsters. <laughs> well, we have no choice yeah. there. We're going to play lobsters. Uh, cool. So this stream, Pat, you're going to be around to a bit short of 11 o'clock this evening. So yeah, roughly. We're going to start the stream normally the way we do, which is play uh, the deck list of the week. And mm-hmm. I'm actually really excited about the deck list of this week. It is, uh, this is Simon Moon, who's also known as Kenny Deacons. Uh, came second in North American Nationals last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, get, I met the guy, Canadian Nationals, this year. A very strong player from New York City. And there was the thing called the King of Subways um, s- s- tournament, which if you ever got the pleasure of going to Worlds, there's something that's called the King of Servers tournament, which is run by yeah. uh, Spags. And if you don't know Spags, he's Spags. He's pretty great. Cool. Um, and it's a team tournament, so you get in groups of four, and everyone can't play. Everyone has to play a different faction. Right. I like that kind of tournament. Yeah, and you can also talk to each other at the table, yeah. so like you can <clears throat> help each other out. Uh, you can choose who plays against who. So it's like pretty strategic, and it's netrunner. Generally, it's kind of more like you know, like taekwondo or something. It's like a yeah. solo sport. It's about you and your opponent. That's it. But now with the team mechanic, it's like super cool that you're talking to people, giving advice, pumping people up. Yeah, I've only cool. been in one one of those kinds of tournaments, but we had a lot of fun with it. Oh, sure. we did one in Montreal too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so King of Subways is the New York Manhattan, I don't know if it was actually in Manhattan, uh, New York City variant of it, and Kenny Deacons apparently did pretty good at 5-0, so we're playing an Argus deck, and this Argus deck actually has no cards in it, because it's Firefox, mm. um, but I've been playing a lot of Argus, actually, at the last game night kit I've been playing Argus, and my list is a bit different than this one. This list, mind you, um, is... Actually, kind of an homage to uh, Credits at Hotmail, a guy from Toronto, who actually originally from Montreal, I believe, called Eric George. Eric George had a great time with that dude um, in the Canadian Nationals. He did really well, first in Swiss, third overall. And he was playing Argus at Canadian Nats. And his deck was kind of, with all due respect to Eric, um, I think it was a bit not as polished as it could be. Okay. Um, Simon Moon talks about how he saw that Argus list, and it's the first Argus list that he saw that he didn't think was terrible. I totally disagree with Simon Moon on that. I think Argus is actually pretty powerful. Yeah, Argus right is now. generally pretty strong. Um, <clears throat> at least a competitive table, so it's interesting. But this deck, basically, it's going all in on the hard-hitting news, which mm-hmm. the idea with hard-hitting news is even if you don't land the tags, they have to spend their whole turn at eight credits clearing it. And yeah, that, it's such a drain on credits. Yeah, yeah, it's honestly pretty good on its own. And then we have Boom as always the threat to kill yep. and NGO fronts. If you want to check out credits at Hotmail's deck, that is like a call-out about... Um, booming jason dang um you'll see it's a bit different it has a lot of weirder stuff going in like it has a bunch of home run kings mm-hmm. uh it has a weird agenda <laughs> suite because I, th- I don't even think eric was running project alice and a whaling deck hmm. it was wild but we're gonna do this version which is pretty cool uh if you don't know spags go home and reevaluate your life yeah spags does a lot of community <laughs> stuff pretty cool dude is this a super modernism deck uh it's a super modern deck now i'm excited I used to love that deck it's similar to it it's a very rush deck 
cool thing with NGO front is install advanced advance turn one is like a legitimate play and people don't know whether or not to run on it or not. For sure. I still think you run on it. You spend a click, they I don't know. Right. But I've been I mean, you lose a click if it is a, an NGO. Yeah. But but you, but the the reward is so potentially so high. Yeah. I guess in Argus it's kinda of rough because hard hitting is as bad any other way. Yeah. Um, but I've been install advancing, advancing food, so I'll make it tables, and people are like, yeah, I'm not just going to waste my time. Matching based on prestige. Hold on one second. I just got to ca- ca- keep up on chat. Patrick, how's your next deck doing lately? That's what DK's I uh, haven't played in a little while, but I might bring it to on Monday at the pub, so we'll see. Hmm? Oh, yeah, we have a game night kit on Monday in Montreal. Yep. If you're in the area, come check out. It's yep. at Randolph Pub. Raph, if you're still watching, you should come. <laughs> <laughs> Did you figure out why you ended up muting so much? Yeah, the button was really easy to hit. I uh, keep Basil was talking about learning motion graphics. Check out YouTube; it's so easy. Uh, you need to get like what After Effects is really good. If you can get a copy of that, uh, it's pretty great. It was in Brooklyn. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, one second. Well, how does the corpse side with a team of three? Uh, I think you just don't pick one of them. Yeah, pick three or four. Is mm-hmm. what BK saying? Yo, Mad Dog, what's up? Happy Patrick, and I guess Andre. <laughs> Happy now and day. <laughs> Simon Moon, nothing of not strong minded. Also doesn't know how to make tea. Oh, that's wow. A- Okay. Oh, interesting comment. Uh, ben P's asking, what is super modernism? I think I missed that. That's actually a pretty old never in an archetype. Mm-hmm. Um, it goes back to an identity. I think it largely came out of an identity called Grendel. Which was oh, an identity. Man. Yeah, right? Uh, I was playing as Grendel when I won my first ever sword, sword championship. Oh, you fu- you killed me really good too in a regional with Grendel. I think I did, yeah. Yeah, it was actually pretty great. Yeah. But these sort of decks, Grendel. they basically try to go really fast. And... Mm-hmm. The idea is if you have a credit lead over the, the runner, you can always threaten them. Back in the day, it was more about sea searched into double scorched earth. Um, and it's basically like you're going to win or lose in the first 10 turns. And it's kind of aggressive. It's kind of like a beatdown deck in yeah. like other board control games. Uh, but there's always been iterations of super modernism decks, decks that are trying to fight really quick. There's probably going to be a reference to it somewhere in this write up. That's actually a really short write up. Um, the most important thing to do right now is. <laughs> One day I'll join Randolph's party. Raphael, Monday, huh? For your interest, Andre, you were saying you were going to become a Twitch partner. Dodgepong was saying you can't stream to YouTube simultaneously if you are. Oh, really? That's really good to know, VK. Thanks for pointing that out. Hmm. I'll look into that. But yeah, no, that sucks, huh? If you subscribe, you get the full <laughs> unmuted stream. That's right. It's behind a paywall. Um, let's dive into this. Do you want to take the reins on this one for one game? Or yeah, how sure. Do you want to let's do try it. it. Um, let's <clears> just copy-paste this one out. So today, what we're going to be playing after we do the deck list of the week, we're going to stop and do some news. Uh, not a lot, not big news week this week. Uh, we're gonna try and do a news segment because there's actually a lot of really cool stuff that's happening in Neverner all the time. Um, new Corp deck, and then after that we're gonna be playing some Leela tonight. Yeah. And then once you head out at eleven, it's just gonna be like the ten to one. It's gonna get really weird. Sure. Lobster. Lobster. Morden Kynans. Okay. <clears throat> Boom. Grendel restructure was the dream on your first draw. Man, yeah. imagine Grendel now, like restructure, Brian Stinson restructure. <laughs> How gross that would be. Oh, that's that's true. That is pretty possible, huh? It was uh, actually Grendel and Leela that I won my first tour champ with. Oh yeah? Yeah. No way. It was the Order and Chaos meta. It was just after Order and Chaos came out. People were playing a lot of Advanceable Ice, and I was playing Leela, which was very, so very, very bad. Good against that. Yeah. Here, one second. I think we got to mute the audio from the computer. Yeah, I think okay. we get on that. Um, you're controlling the the front of a outreach now, so you have to do all the good luck, have fun, and be like very pleasant. I will be very pleasant. Oh, People say I'm very polite. I get that a lot. All right, we're off. Uh, let's just zoom this in enough. I think we actually okay. took too much color out of the camera. Oh, there we are. we're back. We have the color again. Okay, so we have a big we have a big window here. So let us know if this gets in the way. Uh, oh man, the color in our faces we look pretty pallid. That's all you. Okay, let me see. So I hope there's a sweet news infographic transition. There's definitely going to be um, sometime in the near future. I think I'm just gonna pull the old NBN one that used to be in the videos. Oh, if we do that, it'll be easy. Hey Andre, where can I watch? Oh, check this out. Sorry, one sec. Without the exclamation mark, <laughs> exclamation mark. Or on YouTube too. Cheers. All right. Hey Ralph. Uh, okay. So Yo, Ralph, what's up? Polite Canadian. So I just came back from North Carolina, mind you. Um, I went down to which is technically the South. It's the South. Is it the South? Oh, it's cool. The, yeah, okay. I think they were the part of the, like the, mm-hmm. the South South. Um, but uh, let me tell you, uh, people think Canadians are polite, and I think that's only correct to some extent. I think pol- Canadians are like courteous. 
Okay. But like when I think of polite, I also think of friendly. And you go down there, everyone's asking how your day is going. You're walking down the street, people are like shaking your hand and stuff. It was really so wild cool. that I honestly felt uncomfortable. Yeah, that like, would pe- that would really drive me crazy. Like someone comes up to be like, hey, "How are you doing?" I'm like, "Uh, are you? Did I do something wrong? Am I walking <laughs> right. on the wrong side of the street?" I'm um, gonna mulligan this, by the way. Why is that? Uh, there's no reasonable piece of advice that I can res early. Mm-hmm. Although with the archer, I could, of course I could buff. It does have hard hitting news right from the get go. You have three of those though. I have three of those. Yeah. And Primitive's pretty bad. Primitive's pretty bad to start with, and IPO, I'm not going to get this out the first No, you do have to be clicking for credits. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good mulligan. Yeah. Bear Bear, what's up? Okay, Two I people like here. How's it going? Yeah. yeah. Tolassen still a mulligan, too. Tolassen, your name's associated to this deck, right? This is your deck to some extent. I did not fully read the, the deck list. I apologize. That's such a better hand. So Yeah. Okay, so install advanced advanced NGO. Nick, what's up? Okay, so let's talk about our opponent. We'll see okay. what our mandatory draw yeah. is for sure. All right, so it's Max. So it's Max, and Max can mean a lot of things. There's yep. Apocalypse Max. There's Tag Me Max, which mm-hmm. is kind of a rough matchup because we can't trash their console. We yep. have best defense. And then there's like good stuff Max that runs things like indexing and mm. uh, deep data mining sometimes. In most of those cases, what we want to do is ice up R&D. Okay. Um, at least against the indexing. Indexing is kind of lame against this matchup because, well, like t- taking agendas early is kind of hard. Yeah, I think it's all advanced. Advanced the, the that thing is actually not bad. We have two of them. Yeah, we might as well. Yeah. All right, we so can actually make them go through a server as well with it. But I think we've committed. Okay, yeah, to this I, I'm gonna install advanced pass. So Let's advanced once, advanced twice. I think also a fair play, but go for it because yep. uh, we want to f- find out also if they're playing DDoS. Is you could oh it's tag me. It got a war no at the bin. It's tag me. So a lot of our deck is gonna I be see. in a bad spot. Okay, cool. Retrieval one's coming out. The God of War is coming down turn one. We all basically right, top deck boom. We win. Canadians being polite seems like the same stereotype as Australians being crocked on the Easter go one. No, Canadians are actually <laughs> really polite. Oh, you have to... Uh, oh, sorry, that. yeah. Uh, no more action? Yeah. Nobody cares about the legends. North Carolina, nice, beautiful mountain up there. Uh, I didn't get to see that much of it, but... So this card... This is like a, a pretty rough matchup unless we can kill them really fast. Okay. On the basis that Obelis, which one's in the bin... Mm-hmm. Oh, they just played Interdiction. We just got wrecked. Oh, they get... Can we raise it now? Yeah, they can't run it. Oh, that's uh, that's pretty good for us. So but, okay, so, so we're not res non ace cards during the runner's turn. Yeah, so, so we're I can fine. res this on our yeah, turn. Yeah, it's okay, absolutely fine. fine. Okay. Okay, so they're gonna start the next turn with one tag. So basically, we want to find a consulting visit or a boom. Okay. That's also a really good card because uh, it means if they want to go right, deep on R and D, they yeah. need their one copy of Black Orchestra. So yeah, this is great. Okay, Martin, what's up? What's who's with Andre? I haven't been watching lately. Hi, I'm Patrick. Patrick, local celebrity, Sklar. Might recognize that voice from old uh, Metropolitan. Yeah, that's right. Uh, all right, so I'm going to res this and get the money, right? So last and saying, got to go real fast. I think you're right. We got to go real fast. Yeah, you definitely want to res that. We don't have an agenda yet, which sucks. You, yeah, you could technically leave that, but there's not that much reason to. If there was a siphon around, right, that I, would make I, a lot more sense. Yeah. But we, uh, need, we need to draw an agenda and jam behind it because we're going to lose fast. We also want to find our boom. I think okay, first so, click, you can so you don't want it. to hort them over R&D first? Their, so their big multi-access card is dependent yeah. on how many tags they have. Yeah. So that's only going to be an issue in three to four. No, probably five to seven turns. Okay. So for now, we're fine. Sure. All right. So, so th- Oh, yeah, we have a fast track. Fast right? track, install ice. Fast track, what do we rush out in Alice? We want to count on Alice. I would fast track install ice, yeah, and then we don't have to score next turn. Okay, what are we fast tracking? What's in the deck? Alice. Because as soon as we have an Alice counter, we can pull like two booms in a row. Sure. In two turns, maybe that's enough. John, what's up? The gentleman on the right has a distinct honor of having a name that's perfect for screaming (laughs) while shaking your fist at the sky. Yeah, thanks, John. (laughs) How's it going, John? Uh, How you been? All right, going to install that and install. Uh, yeah, we well, Mouseless the Hortum's or... really good because we can always triple advance it and that buys us a lot of time because sure. they need to find the Black Orchestra. Also, it's a hard end to run. Yeah, it's a hard end to run. And we res it for three credits. Or server two. Holy shit, John's coming home. When are you coming home, man? Yeah. Holy shit. Draw Hortum on R&D, advance it to three. So last time, I think we have to go faster than that, no? So they took one tag, Black Orchestra in the bin, so that went real poorly for us. <laughs> okay. They played one <laughs> iPad worse. And the Obelis is coming out, so that increases their hand size. So seven hand size is the issue because we can't kill them. That's right. So we might want to go ahead and double ice this. They give us a fair bit of money. Oh, this is going to be really bad. It's a really bad matchup. Okay. So he comes back in two weeks. Cool. Yeah, holy shit. Uh, I kid, kind of. Oh, yeah. What was Austin? <laughs> was there a much net runner in Austin? Yeah, Austin must have a scene, right? Okay. Tell John the real party is on Twitch, not... And I think it's meant to say YouTube, but it <laughs> auto-completes it beautiful. Uh, all right, so we do just score this, or do we start protecting R and D and HQ? So if we do triple events the Hortum, I think it says what it is. Yeah, we don't have arc lockdown on this deck, but it means that they have to spend six legit credits to get through there. Mm-hmm. Uh, regardless, they have to spend about four to get in there, or actually no, around eight, right? Unless they dean lister it. 
I think you might want to like double advance it and then put another piece of ice in room because we need a big big atlas or we're gonna lose the game. So double advance the double advance the atlas. I think put, so. Uh, mouse with us? I think so. Yeah, sure. That makes it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Atlas token is big, Ben. I think you're totally right. It's kind of how you win this one. This is an Austin awesome scene. Very polite. Some good players, but I confess that for Montreal is probably just homerism. It mm. might be. Montreal is a really strong meta for what it's worth. And Stimac in the bin, that's really good. That's one of the best cards they have for contesting this remote. For sure. Dean Lister is another one. And they're playing Peace in Our Time, so we just got a big ass Atlas. Cool. We had a well known theme of the show's Andre's vanity and manifest by needing <laughs> to be in the middle of the screen and so on. Patrick, mm -hmm. how do you manage to have Andre forget this and co host? I'm just being I, I'm on the wheelie chair, so you can kick me out of the screen whenever he wants. I gave you the big the good chair for what it's worth. The good chair and also the manipulable chair. Okay, hold on. Okay, we can so, we can nuke for seven. You it, can spend your whole that, turn that nuking is for a seven. Decent tempo play, right? Because this is a well protected server right now. Yeah. We think. We could get the product atlas, but right now we could It's not a well protected server. But if you nuke their hand, they probably can't contest that. Okay, but they probably like they're going to get there's that would be card a card draw. I've I've had worse in there, right? So if we nuke... Okay, check this out. Okay. Oh, fuck. Wait. There's... They, they played one I've had worse. we got to check the bin right now, okay? So they played two I've had worse. Oh, wow. So the chance of they're having a I've had worse than bottom eight teams higher than the bottom seven. Because they've been right. playing them. So I'm yes, assuming they want to draw into their combo pieces. Now, if we nuke them, spend the whole turn, mm -hmm. next turn we can do advance, advance, and we're one click short of booming them again. Because this is our boom window, right? Yeah. <coughs> Which means we can advance this once more. Sorry if I coughed on you. All right. We can advance this once more. Mm-hmm. And then do something else like ice up R and D, and they might. I don't know. The thing is, as soon as we advance it once more, they know it's a legit agenda. Yes. But the idea is that we want to get this. Like, we want to be able to do advance and then boom right away. Yeah. And, uh, fucking, we need like a biotic flavor or something. What we need is a subcontract. We need a subcontract really bad. Score Alice now. Boom more next turn. Yeah, yeah, that's actually probably just as good as we Honestly, get two yeah, tokens. Yeah, for sure. We double boom. Yeah, a human that seems really reasonable. Yeah, okay. boom them. Then they gotta draw. Then two atlas. I think actually, to last and like how human says, we can just score this, and then we can then boom. And there's almost gonna be no way they can draw back up. I guess Obelisk helps them draw real hard. They'll have to play their mass draw card. Yeah. But the chance of us hitting with boom is really hard. Yeah. Uh, I would score that to five. Okay. Yeah. Advance. They have black orchestra. Advance. And... Boom now because Merc. That's actually a good point. Merc might be a problem that we have to play around. That being said, they don't oh, have yeah. a lot of right. resources yeah, wrong, installed, yeah. and there's one Yarogniv in the in the bin. And they lost two Mars's, which Ooh, is Ooh, that's pretty nice. Good. I like that. Okay, so they've got... So counter surveillance right, is going for the four dig on HQ. That's pretty okay. If you knock it out of hand, you look wicked smart. Yeah, we do. Actually, they die if they don't... Oh, no, they're going to they're gonna draw four cards here. Yeah, so no more action. Nuke the hand. Dump all the paperclip. B.O. in there. Yeah, I don't know whether we did this right. We might have not. They're not on Paparazzi. They're on Yoragnia for sure. Trash here we could archive memories. We actually could have used the Atlas for the boom right now. Yeah. So we would maybe lightly protect that. But do we want to Atlas for Boom while they're accessing our hand? Oh, yeah, Boom's trash box. Yeah. No, okay. so definitely don't. Okay, cool. And their hand size? They're, okay. They're, they're, okay, they have a lot. Their hand maximum hand size is 10. Ugh, that's too bad. Build script. Interesting. Yeah, still boomable, right? Like, we can still boom them for value? Is that what it, you... it depends. It all depends on where the last copy of mm -hmm. their uh, current... Uh, they're not the current, but their counter surveillance. Can you check how many counter surveillance are in the heap? Or in... Yeah. Because as soon as they counter surveillance, they'll be drawing for seven. So the tempo boom isn't particularly good. Mm -hmm. One of the best times we have possibly to boom them is right after they levy. But I'm assuming sure. they'll be levying into counter surveillance. Yep. That being said, they have nine cards left in their stack. Jake, this what's up? Happy Thursday. This is deck of the week. It is. It is a deck of the week. It's a hard hitting news deck. Not a lot going to be going on here against a self damage uh, anarch. We could uh, value boom, but we only have two booms in our deck. We've only got two booms. Yeah. I see. Oh, but okay. we have an archive memory, so we could like in theory do consulting boom. <laughs> yeah. It might not Consulting good things boom, that because no, the chance no, of us no hitting their counter surveillance okay. is really good. Your Agnum is really good. I think yeah. we actually have to. That's true. Them. If we get rid of your Agnum now, that's being wiped out, same old on Levy, it's pretty good. Yeah, we could probably hit that too. All right, well, let's go for it. Let's oh, just try booming. Right let's just see what we can do. Tempo boom is just funny to hear. Kyle, what's up? Yeah, tempo boom is pretty silly. All right, we're doing it right. Yeah, I commit. So we've hit an I've had worse. We hit a Levy. We hit one counter surveillance. So there's one more in the game, and the last I've had worse. All right, so we did knock out a same old thing and a Levy. That feels good. That sounds pretty good. I'm sure they have more, but. Oh, yeah. so let's see what they, they hit. The, you hit their levy. We might hit the levy. How many levies do these deck architects run? I can't tell if it's one or two. 
So they have two same old things in the bin and one levy. And they just lost a stomach and the Dean, so that's fine. The Obelisk and I've at worst makes it hard to figure out. Yeah, it's kind of really hard. And now they know they spend a seven. So they just drew another counter surveillance. So we could potentially lose right here. <laughs> well, they have to use that. Well, if we had one snare, we'd win. Uh, we're so... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is not going to go well for us. So I think we only have like one or two Hortums. I think it's two Hortums, three Mouseless in this deck list. I'm not saying Rogue Trading, so they probably have an influence for two Levy. Okay, so we, we are Rogue still alive. Yeah, we're fine. The thing is, as soon as we use our outs, we shuffle our R&D, which is a huge mistake. Depending on... Can you check the heap? I think that's all through counter surveillance, so they actually have no pressure this turn. Yeah. And we can also start counting their influence. Uh, is that all th Yeah, that's all three. Cool. So... so in the bin also we see, sorry for faces obstructing it, but we see two same old things, one levy. Which means if we count all the influence, right? So levy is three, build yep. scripts is three more, so that's six. Yep. Excuse me, rebirth is seven, special order is nine. It's likely they have another levy in hand. So we could in theory boom the levy out of hand. Oof. Yeah, boom the levy out of hand. Okay, so yeah, Atlas, let's do it. Boom levy, yeah, apathy, we're doing it, we're booming him. Yeah, just boom it. Because we can always archive boom. So we hit Mars for Martians, Levy, Yoragna, Mercs, Demon's Oh, nice. Trip. So now it's basically they have to win off their, their breakers and they have no multi-access, no oh. way to do it. Click for credit. We probably win next turn. We don't want to... Yeah, I, I guess so, right? Uh, mm. Yeah, you might as well ice ID, right? Yeah. Surprise, pass the <laughs> Yeah, because the next turn we can archive memories, boom. I think we 100% won this. Yeah. The thing is we just shuffle R&D, so like in theory they could hit two agendas in a row. Yeah. Interesting that they didn't trash Prysec, because Prysec is lethal for them now. Oh, but, that's very true. Prysec yeah. is lethal. They 100% need to trash that. They are really digging into HQ. Vanilla Access is Prysec blank. Twice. Vanilla is blank, but it might look like it's something scarier, like they might think it's an archer. Yeah. So we, we just won. So we don't have another boom, but we have an archive memory. So you can do Atlas Archive Boom. Atlas Archive Boom? Yeah. Oh, Atlas yeah, for true. Archive Memories, pull Archive Boom. That makes boom, sense. Boom. Wow, okay, so the value booms actually did it. We were never a lethal boom, that being said, you are lethal booming them. But like, it was all about hitting right at the point where they couldn't draw out of it. Hey Andrea, what's your, you know what's gonna Wayland Rush Days Cortex Locks? This guy played a lot of Cortex hey, Locks Wayland. I do, I do love Cortex Lock Wayland. I did really well with Cortex Lock Wayland. Kaboom. Been out of Netrunner for most of this cycle, other than some casual play on my channel, just play better. I've been watching your archive YouTube videos and unboxing to catch on the latest cards and decks. Looks like fun. Gonna start going to my local meta. Martini, cool. the game's really good right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it honestly is. Okay, I'm making us much pinker faced because. Excuse me. Uh, configure video. Gotta put that color back and gotta eat our beats. If you're just tuning in, my name's Andre. I'm joined. Fuck, it keeps going out. Um, I'm joined by Patrick Squire. Hey, I'm Patrick. Um, Thanks for doxing me. <laughs> Oops. Uh, let's get another one of those in, right? Yeah, sure. Another Lobster Modernism? Yeah, that's sure. True. If you're just tuning in, we're playing the deck list of the week. This is Simon Moons and Tol uh Lobster Modernism. It's an Argus Hard Hitting News deck. Yep. That was an interesting matchup on the basis that it was a Tag Me deck. Yeah. So a lot of our cards have no value. Right. And if they'd gotten their Yoragnia of Mercs out, we would have a much harder time with that. We just have to trash it, and they have to like. That's Yoragnia, true. They, they, we didn't see any other resources, right? They didn't play no other yeah. resources. If they played their mm -hmm. same old things, that's a value trash, anyways. Yeah. Uh, they didn't need any other mo money. People see courteous <laughs> enough to die the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, yeah, you can hop in if you would like. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, three booms in a row is super mean. It definitely is. I never. I don't think I've ever played a game where I boomed three times. Carpet bomb to city heartless people. Okay. It's, no, it's... no. We restructured a city. We were we're gonna build new apartment buildings. It'd be really nice. Yo, Thomas. What's up? <laughs> I like the name Cluster Fox. I've goofed it in the way that you expect me to goof it on stream many times. Oh, uh, John, you got beat out, my dude. We'll do another oh. one if you're around later this evening. Austin, John. you're like an hour or an hour, two hours behind us, I think. I'm pretty sure Austin's an hour behind, two hours maybe. I've got no idea, man. Whew. Okay. Do you want to run this one? Uh, yeah. Okay, I can do okay. it. Cool. So, um, bit of a backstory. I've had a really long day at work today. I'm actually in pajamas. Um, we're in Bibin. Uh, I got a beer, which is the first time I think we've done, uh, like, 
recreatory drugs <laughs> on the street. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Because we definitely were drinking when we did some of the commentary. Mm. That's a little behind the scenes magic. Behind the scenes, no one knows that. Yeah. Um, but we're like just tanked at this point. Um, Absolutely. That's why we look so red in the face. Yeah, which is why because it's of how out. much we're drinking. Don't tell Twitch. Oh my God, no. They don't like that. I Dude. don't think. Um, wasn't paying enough attention to see which they were playing. Dummy box, I think typically. I think just Obelisk is enough. Some people run Fall Guys. Some people play Wireland at Pavilions. I don't think we saw either of those. Also, Jester, what's up? Um, I think some people just run resources. Like, same old thing is good. It's sometimes Pavilion, but I don't think those cards do enough. I feel like you can put enough pressure on that you don't actually have to spam resources that don't do anything without anything on the table. Mm -hmm. John, I'll get the next one then. Okay, perfect. We'll do it. Yeah. I think we should turn this stream into a drinking game. I am very careful. I'm not <laughs> overdoing it here. All right. Well, oh, interesting. Uh, oh, I'm playing this one. Great. Yeah. Okay. I love this hand. This hand's really fun. I like this hand yeah, a that's lot. Yeah, that's a good hand. What if we install advanced events to hostile and don't score? And then they'll be like, oh, it's an NGO <laughs> from. We yeah. can keep this. Loaded to your classic. Oh, okay. it's good. Good to your... Uh, the beer being consumed is Castor. Where's that coming from? Oh yeah, it's yeah. this is a local brewery. My brother is really into beer. He loved this when he came here, so I'm gonna take his word for it. I'm drinking uh, a stout. I like stout. It is the same matchup. That's weird. Yeah, it is. You look like an L. How's it going, Asshole? Hoping you're having a good week. So we don't know what kind of max it is. Loaded your classic, whether that means classic as of uh, ten minutes ago or classic mm -hmm. as in Max is classic. And we played against Cluster Fox's Max before, I believe. I think we're just gonna go for the bad pub. Bad pub is actually pretty easy to to get value of in max because all your heat breakers come back cheaper yep. we have things like these that are cheap to break i don't even know what's better getting the ngo front down or getting the hostel down they both give us a pretty good credit swing i think i'm just gonna go for this one uh just because it lets us turn on archers we're not rising yep. to that's a good point but getting an agenda early is pretty great how do you spell it castal it's it's like that but with an r instead it means beaver in french yeah and it looks like we're just playing good old stuff and we actually have data ravens in our decks so and hunting mm. grants has value mike what's up Who's on the stream also? Hi, I'm Patrick. That was enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Hi, I'm Patrick, local celebrity squire. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so that's the thing that we talked about last game. Yeah, We really okay. didn't have much to do against that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a shuffle if they want to stack the next five cards in a way that's going to be really that's bad true. for us. That's true. That'd be interesting. But they're also exiting with only one click left. So best case scenario, they steal a big agenda, even they mad dash it, mm -hmm. and they take two damage and they hit an knife head worse. Hmm. And then they drop to three. That's the best. Patrick Starr, it's correct. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll have to see where I can find it in our nation's capital. <laughs> That's how you say it in French. That was Spanish. <laughs> oh, man. So this is generally a pretty cool choice. The thing is, if we draw, like, we could even fast track in some cases oh. for... Uh... Oh, no, no. Sorry. Fox X Machina is the spectator. Sorry. Oh, yeah, there's different more foxes in here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a chance that we could, like, go ahead and fast track for um, that one with the priest on it, trying to convert the big, uh, the big tank uh there's like the card that looks like it has the age of empires priest on it Wololo converting the i know age of yeah empires. right what are you... okay mm. there's um showdown showdown standoff standoff we could actually go for a standoff is that what standoff looks like oh yeah i guess i i, I mean i i really kind of phased out in the mars cycle so maybe i yeah, stand I guess up I just looks don't know. Like that. Stand up looks like. LeBron, oh, I can stand. I would index first click instead of click through. You can gamble afterwards if you don't find anything. Yeah, I think you're totally right. Also, the data sucker is like pretty greedy. Generally, this ice. I guess some of the ice is pretty good here. Yeah. Oh, Lolo. Vicky, what's up? Oh, Lolo. You know, um, I think the last time I was at a tournament with John, we had this really nerdy competition. Maybe not with John, but myself and someone else, where we saw if we could name all the cards to depicted on the various data packs available at the store oh fuck and i did them all and i felt bad oh yeah oh, you shouldn't feel bad about that also john sorry that was meant to be your game you're totally right mm -hmm. uh my memory is really good stand up exactly like hostile I, I think they're kind of different wow whoa maybe they're just setting up our next five clicks okay and they installed daily cast oh, okay they wanted to career fair it but they, hmm. they goofed it so that's fine. So they career fair. They also have only one card in hand. <laughs> I was so impressed. I swooned a little. Yeah. <laughs> so do you feel like we have to shuffle this? Because we don't have any good right. play. We could just grab a standoff and hold it. We could also start drawing through it. But like we can install advance advance this. They have one card in hand. So like I don't know what they're planning I, here. I do like the idea of shuffling it. Because I think it, if they're smart, they probably didn't put any ice in. But that makes the same old thing indexing pretty good. Yeah, you're right. I think they would hide ice. Yeah, yeah let's go for the fast track. Let's see. So none of these are really good. If we had a food in hand, 
I honestly would consider like or not a food, uh, hard hitting news. I would consider right, right. jamming. Um, let's just do the standoff. That's sure. a fun one. We can actually keep that in hand. It doesn't okay, really matter. Okay, can I see that for a second? Yeah, you see the priest down there with his cane. Oh his yeah, cane, trying to convert the, the okay, big old yeah. rock ship. Yeah. Do you want to jam it into your front? <laughs> And advance at once? Yeah, That'd instead be of a standoff. Great. Um, <laughs> Might as well. I mean, we have to play something from our hand, right? Yeah, I guess and I don't think they run it, right? so this is fine. They probably don't want to steal with no clicks left. Yeah. Install advanced Prysec. <laughs> we could actually done install install Prysec. That would be not bad. I want to jam both Prysecs in the same server. And I don't think they run this. So Paperclip and Black Orchestra are both in the bin. Cheap installs when they have no, um, uh, with they have bad pub. And also the top of R&D is pretty mean. Ben P's asking in chat, Patrick, what are your favorite games besides A&R? Ooh, uh, like card games? I play uh, Arkham Horror, the card game. I like that. Uh, I play a little bit of Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Born. I don't like it nearly as much as Netrunner, but I think it's still an interesting game. And I like Plat Hat's approach to like customer service. Like They put everything you ever need in one box. Even a living card game like Netrunner doesn't really do that because you still need to buy more than one to be competitive. Um, board games-wise, I've been playing a lot of... What's the one we played? Gloomhaven? Yeah, Gloomhaven. Yeah, Gloomhaven. Big fan of Gloomhaven. Um, so we can, in theory, do consulting visit for uh, hard-hitting news. It started next turn with 12 credits, so we could do, like, <clears throat> hedge fund. Hedge fund hard-hitting news. Consulting hard-hitting news. Mm -hmm. um, we can recover with the NGO front, so it looks a bit better. It buys us some time. The thing is, I don't feel like we have anything else to, to capitalize on. Yeah. They went for single access as last click, though, which also I think is a huge mistake against Argus. <laughs> they do know what deck we're playing, but like if there's a snare on top there, they end with a tag and like two cards in hand, which yeah. is pretty bad. Gloomhaven, I want to play that game. Yep. Pogolos is saying price like R&D. Generally, this deck doesn't work off of defending central servers in like a pretty good way. You want to just jam these all in a remote server and then they just don't run it anymore because it's way too oppressive. Uh, we're going to probably need ice where we're going with that one. So that's a start. Yep. And I don't want to throw anything out. I think I just <laughs> jam two price X on it. Sure. It seems like they can actually still run that relatively well. And you want to run this now before there's an agenda in it, but they think there's an agenda in it. They also just lost their levy, which is pretty yeah. good. Score standoff. I'm in no rush to do that. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty good in hand. Um, it's good once we draw an archer that we want to score that, but it's like a pretty good hard hit for them. If they steal that, and they're probably running career fair. Yeah. Uh, they actually have to take the meat or the tag, mm -hmm. and that's really good for Yeah, us. like standoff is a kind of agenda we want them to. <coughs> like, isn't standoff better for us? Right now when we already have a hostile in the bin for us to use for archer mm -hmm. um ben or sorry puppy's asking why not play the hedge fund we have a lot of trashables and stealables in hand i actually want to practice and protect the price x yeah having 13 credits next turn as opposed to nine doesn't matter that much and also having econ in hand that's not played immediately it's actually relatively good when you're playing trace based uh punishment decks in wayland because yeah. then you can do like hedge fund hedge fund hard hitting news something like that and we yeah. also have the burst from this so like out of nowhere we can have nine more credits than they could size us up as having which is pretty good would you recommend gloomhaven as a soul for a solo player pat uh yeah i played a few games a bit in solo yeah it, it, it is pretty satisfying honestly it looks cool but i can't tell whether i'd find the management fun or tedious like <laughs> he said it's expensive remember that time we tried to play it the other night yeah, we were like, hey, we only have two and a half hours. Let's try claim Gloomhaven. Oops. We gave up immediately and played Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. Yeah, it was pretty hard to set up. Yeah. I do have, like, special, like, fishing tackle trays. Is that what you call them? Yeah. Yeah, that we just got from the dollar store or Amazon that make, uh, make setting it up a lot easier, but not easy, just easier than it would be otherwise. So they're going to sit on, they're sitting on a comfortable 13 credits next turn. And if we can install advanced advance this, they might think it's an IPO and might think it's something else. But mm -hmm. the idea is that this is a pretty big tempo hit. And then we can generally scare them with eight. Like we do get advance, excuse me, pop, pop, and hard hitting news. Mm -hmm. It buys us some time, but like we really need to draw ice. And this deck actually has more ice than you might think for a Wayland Rush deck. I think it has like 13, 14 ice. Uh, 13 ice. So with the fact that we haven't drawn anything, it's just a bit unfortunate. Yeah, a an app for the monster cards actually sounds like a great idea. and something I should probably look into. Oh, that does sound really good. Yeah. Advanced NGO for money. I'm in no rush. That one seems pretty good. Lovers in Dangerous Space Time does have one of the best names for a computer game for a while. Yeah. I guess it's pretty fun. Uh... Also, I'm Ralph's hero. Hey, Ralph. Hey, Ralph. Ralph. <laughs> Okay, they've lost an Ice Carver, and they've lost an I've Had Worse. I've Had Worse is definitely a card you want to keep track of. Mm -hmm. it, it's less so important back in the days where Scorch Earth was around, because you want to calculate whether things were lethal or not. And it's more like a tempo card at this point. Like, they can generally take a tag, and it'd be good for them. So running the Price X server is not that bad. 
But for Ooh. Boom, we don't really care about F Edwards. And they hit a food right now. Uh, let's see what they take the tag or the meat damage. Um, take the they tag. Take a tag. They're going to drop the tag, I assume. Yeah, but they still have a fair bit of money. So, I don't know. We really need ice here because we need to make them install their breakers. Right now, we're not forcing them to spend any money. And that's one of the things you really need to do ASAP. Mm. It's also just a matter of time. Like, they could have done the same old thing indexing right there. They might be waiting for their mad dashes. And we have no shuffle abilities on the table. So, we might actually want to get an Atlas with a token. But we're not really in control of that right now. And yeah, mm. having a standoff in hand would be really good right now. Can also consulting for Econ Ward, then hard hitting news. That's true, but it's I don't even think that's that's like barely better than um they didn't get an agenda there. That's not yeah, even that's that cool. much better than uh clicking for credits, right? Because you're spending two clicks to make a two credit differential. Yeah. Because we're spending two, they're losing four. So yeah, it's that's right. like yeah. clicking for credits. Mm -hmm. It's better when they you're putting them underneath eight credits so they can't clear the hard hitting tags, but when you're both above eight, I don't think uh, that you'd ever want to consult for an economic. Same thing as the levy insurance. It might be. They might be scared of it. Oh, that's actually really perfect because we can score this out of it. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Also, notice they're just not running this, right? Like, they they, they gave mm -hmm. up. Yep. They're like, okay, I don't need to deal with it. Now, they do not They do have a paperclip. So, this card basically makes them pay four credits once, and then it's always free. Two clicks, two credits for four, but we pay two for it too, though. So, like, it only matters if we drop them underneath eight. The differentials, yeah. Hardening news is interesting. It's worse for Sea Source. And mind you, the big difference of the list I've been playing versus uh, the Simon Moon's deck here is I'm on Sea Source Exchange. Which I think is also like pretty good. You don't need more credits that you just need more credits than them, and you can generally do a three point swing. Like we could trade standoff for food, and sometimes that just mm. wins you the game. Yeah, it's weird. All right, so they're not running any of this stuff. We don't have to actually res anything so besides they, the front. So they left their tag. What? They left their tag? Right? That's not a bug, right? They left their tag. They legit left their tag. I think we want to trash the same old thing and trash this because we're basically it's like playing an economic warfare. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, th th that's a good find. I did not even look at that. Uh, that's all gonna have to go now. Whoops. Hmm. Interesting. We also could consider scoring this. We probably should have considered scoring it. Yeah, because uh, they probably true. run it. We probably should one hundred percent should have just scored that. Yeah. To, to to dispel that. Oops, we probably messed that. Yeah, hedge fund first, then trash, same old thing, cast. That's pretty good. Yeah, we definitely should have scored the same old thing here because they're more likely to run it with the activist meeting on the table because they think like, oh, it's an NGO front. They can't rest right, it. Right, exactly. So we probably should. And they just draw two more activists too. So maybe we're going to wait for them to throw those out. Also, the knife had worse and they still have to clear the tag. So if they run it, it's still going to be a pretty big tempo hit because they have to spend four credits clearing stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh man, we just need to get one good piece of ice. So even if we get rid of the Tactivist meeting, they have two more in the grip now. I think they're going to throw them out. They have too many cards in hand. Oh yeah, they're running it. So that's fine. They're generally going to take two meet here actually because they have a big hand size. Mm. But we probably wanted to score that. The Activist actually doesn't matter because we don't have to res things like Price Act. It just matters with the NGO front. Yeah. But we're not even going to lose that much value on that NGO front that's only advanced once. Yeah. And they lost a stim hack, which we'd actually rather have them play that. Stim hack and a cast. So that's more money down the drain. Mm. Play Big Brother, boom. That's that's. <laughs> I miss Big Brother. Dyke, what's up? Are you drinking kombucha? No, I'm drinking a porter. How are you doing, also? So they trashed the hacktivist. Uh, they have four hand size. Is that correct? They actually played a second. Hand I don't hand understand hand? what just happened. What just happened? So they spent a click. So they played a hacktivist and that trashed a hacktivist. They must have made a mistake, right? I don't know why they played a hacktivist. Hmm. There's no reason to do that. Okay, food is bad. We can solve man's events food, but with the hacktivist, it seems pretty lousy. Uh, then now the problem is they're oh well, they're only on three points, which is not terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, we could consider at this point like we could score this and then just jam the oak down in it. Hmm. We also don't have to like we can do advance, advance res install advance and just hope we don't hit the hard ending news because this server is pretty unapproachable. We're gonna take a gamble here. It's basically okay, I see. So it's a two and four or two and Whatever, how many cards are here? Six. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, because you're, you're planning on resing the price X. No. Oh, no, no, you're resing the NGO and yeah. hoping we don't lose that. Well, at least res the NGO now. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, we probably should have pre-res that before advancing it because it might have changed our turn. Yeah. But, like, this is really hard for them to get into. All three I've had worse are out of the game um, or in the heap, mind yeah. you. Another single thing lost, too. So even just, like, the meat damage from price X might have value. Is that three same old things out now? Uh, I think it's only two. Oh, it's only two. Yeah, sorry. I think it's only two. Sorry that our camera... There's no good way to, to show the heap that well. Yeah. 
whatever second, people are looking for. Yeah. Two points. Yeah, they're on two points. This is not a legit three pointer in their player. Yeah. Told you Hostel and Stand Up look the same. They kind of do. So they're running it. So we're going to spend four on it. They're probably going to spend a bit more. And they got to figure out what to do here. Because they can end up taking four meat damage here, which is probably not great. But this is probably enough to get off a of hard hitting news. And they're actually accessing that first. Okay. I don't know whether that's right or not. You probably want to find out what the other ones are. Because that's the information that doesn't change. And really? I would go I for the agenda first. So we hit another same old thing. So we just talked about the value of that is pretty good. Yeah. Whether or not they also want to trash these puts them a bit further behind and easier to hard hit and use them. Mm -hmm. And we have consulting boom. And it looks like they're not trashing it. So the server is still good. It did hit an iPad worse. Okay. That being said, they're well, going to be down to around eight or seven credits. So hopefully we top deck the economic. Always score the hostels and standoffs. Yeah, maybe. We, I think we should have scored that one for sure. We left it on the table on accident. We 100% yeah. should have scored that. Hmm. Okay, so they're at four points. They are indexing us. <laughs> now we lose. We drew one piece of ice this game, though. Um, so totally out of our control, right? Uh, there's still two foods in the deck, uh, three atlases. I mean, it's, it's hard for them to win off of this with only one quick left, right? No, there's two clicks left. Okay, so they, oh, they have two clicks left. Yeah, right? they have two clicks left. Yeah, we probably lose here. It'd be nice if we hit this indexing. They might have actually just drawn it with the I've had worse. Because mm -hmm. that's, I think they probably drew it with I've had worse. Oh, yeah. we. we I see. Mad Dash, yeah. Yeah. Um, man, yeah, we play no ice this game. We probably can't win off of that. Um, cool. Yeah, they definitely hit that with the I've had worse. Because if they didn't, I think you're just indexing Mad Dash and then just run the remote. Yeah. Just hit the agenda before anything else. Were there 14 card deeps and hit one of our 13 ice? Yeah, we've gone through a bunch of cards. And we just haven't got any ice. Uh, there's still a lot of ice in the deck. It's still 13 pieces of ice, so not too good for us. They played around Brian Stinson relatively well. That didn't fire, but like Raven on R&D would be pretty ideal. Uh, Archer would be really good too. Mm. It's They have the, the data suckers, which is pretty great, but it's still something, right? Spreads it in Mad Dash, the Oaktown. That actually has a chance of being... No, it doesn't really have a chance of being lethal, does it? Don't leave homes without Mad Dash. Mad Dash is really good right now. Also, don't leave home without ice. You probably need that. How many levies they have? I think they're on two. It might actually just be one. It's like two levies, that's six. Indexings are pretty heavy, too. Oh, sorry, two indexings, that's six. And then seven, eight, nine. Yeah, 10, that's right. 11, and then that's more influence. And... Yeah, they're only on one levy. How back the Mad Dash is a surprise, I guess. They might have. They might have just drawn it, actually, too. I think no matter what, like, we're likely to lose. Like, even if they didn't have the Mad Dash, we still lose. The Mad yeah. Dash was just for style. So they just styled on us a bit. Probably didn't drop Mad Dash except for the I've had worse. Yeah, I think the, I've had worse actually drew them indexing and Mad Dash. Yeah, it seems like it. Because otherwise, yeah, you Mad Dash the remote. Sure. All right. Um, uh, <coughs> uh, Bless you. You're just tuning in. My name is Andre. I've had a long day. I'm a bit on the <laughs> Hi, I'm Patrick. I've also had a long day, but you don't hear me talking about it. Hey, yo. Um, we're going to be playing a deck. Uh, John, you still John. there? John. John, you want to play a game? Um, I don't want John. I don't want John to know our deck. So we're playing a deck. This is a deck list from somebody in my meta named Eric. Eric's pretty pretty good player. Came in top in the Canadian Nationals. Was in top eight. I'm ready. John, you wanna? I'll host. You gotta turn the stream off though because it's all secret from now on. I have a worse draw me into the combo. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Get out of here, John. It. I will leave the channel. All right, John. I hope to see you soon. All right, let's white fang, John. What's that mean? You know when you you shout at someone, you make them think you never love them. So that's that they run away. No, it's from the book White Fang. Oh, okay. I thought that was just common enough to. Great. Um, I think it's Jack London. Uh, books. Yeah, you know, I spent time in Jack London's cabin when I was living up north. Really? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's his reconstructed cabin. It's just oh. a place you sit. That's probably nice too. Yeah, you I spent like spend some time in the Yukon, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do like sitting. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Eric has been playing this deck you might know him as Millhouse in chat or around the place and he's been playing a lot of Leela lately he's actually one of the most like the dentist system uh, he's been playing <laughs> a lot of um, Leela and this might not be his most modern version of the deck I think there's some easy changes we could make in this deck specifically cards like no one home probably not that necessary in the meta depends what you're playing against but it's we want to play this deck specifically because I think this deck teaches in some ways some interesting fundamentals. Because mm -hmm. a lot of players when they're newer to Netrunner, they're just kind of getting their accesses in, having fun, like yeah. doing the things that feel good. And, and you shouldn't try to be having fun while you're playing Netrunner. Right it's now. important that you discard that notion really Absolutely. quickly. Absolutely, you have to end the fun. That's what uh, we're here to do. Yeah, it's be end the fun. Um, but this deck is it's it's a gang sign deck, and it, this card basically you want to sit back and pull things from hand. And we have the whole HQ interfaces, and we have Maul on top of this too. 
But this deck is largely about tempo and it's about <laughs> where are the agendas. And that's actually one of the best things that you can maybe, not maybe one of the best things. There's a thing you'll probably want to focus on if you're new to the game. Mm -hmm. It's trying to figure out where the agendas are before you're planning your turn. So yep. for instance, with Leela, a lot of times it's difficult to fast advance things because your ice gets bounced and you can capitalize on it. And that's why the agendas <laughs> crop up in HQ. So sometimes it's worth it to like sneak Darth Beta and then like, I don't know, inside job HQ and stuff like that. So yep. uh, we'll, we're going to hopefully do that well. Um, I've been playing also Leela recently. I played at Worlds at um, King of Servers. I was playing a Leela deck. It was different than this. I was on turntable. Hmm. And mind you, Leela took actually a really substantial hit in terms of her competitive viability with the race, least and most want to list 2.1 or whatever it's called. On the basis that she lost the ability to run both Gang Sign, which is now a restricted card, mm. and Tapworm. Yeah, Tapworm is great. And Tapworm mm. used to be largely the economy of this deck almost entirely, and now we've had to switch to other weird things. So we've cards like Liberated Accounts, which is weird to see in Criminal. But yeah. Criminal is in a really kind of rough place right it's now. It's weird to see Criminal relying on Anarchs for economy. Economy. So if you've been playing from the beginning, like that seems so strange. Yeah. But here we are. Um, so I haven't played this version itself. I think Dirty Laundry also might not be right in here. We have credit cutting to cheat off fems. We have some cool things going on here, but we're going to play a game against John of where are the agendas. Also, Eric did say that this is not his latest version of the deck. He's been tinkering this a lot. He also played this at Canadian Nationals and came in fourth, fifth place. Oh, cool. So this like that deck. Yeah. Nice. Substantial deck. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Tobo, what's up? No fun, Netrunner. Always Acid Spam. <laughs> this deck is also pretty good against Acid Spam on the fact that it has Maw and Aeneas Informant, so... It's it's honestly pretty good. <laughs> Illamil, what's up? White Fang was one of my absolute favorite books as a kid. Oh, I haven't read a lot of Jack London. I, one Jack London story I remember very vividly is the one where a man is traversing through the Yukon. He has a, a dog with him. He's trying to make it to a cabin where he knows other uh, prospectors are out there. And he tries to... Oh, I think it's called To Build a Fire. <laughs> that makes sense. He just tries to build a fire under a tree. And he tries and tries, and he's getting his frostbite's getting worse and worse. And eventually he gets the fire going, and a great wind shakes the tree, and snow falls in the fire, snuffing it out and his life with it, because he knows then that he will die, but it will take him hours to do so. This is a children's book? Yeah, yeah. Oh, funny. At least I read it. Oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, to build a fire is real good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're playing against Asmari. This deck is honestly pretty diverse. It does have hardware. It does have... It has all the kites of cards. Okay, good. And it has mostly uh, resources. Can you So John has... It, this is John, right? Yeah, yeah John yeah. knows they're playing Plan My Agendas. Okay. Um, so this hand's not fantastic. The best card we have for sure is Liberated Accounts, but all these other things are largely unplayable early in the game. Yeah. So I think we can mulligan this. Sure. <coughs> That's a hand, right? that's, that's a hell of a hand. You really had a hard day, huh? Yeah, I've been recovering from <laughs> from uh, some... Whatever. I'll be, we'll be fine. We're coming through. Uh, Leela does not equal fun IMO, but to each their own. I think Leela's really interesting. Yeah, I, I've played Leela ever since she came out. And before she was really... God, I'm just going to sound like a hipster, aren't I? Yeah, <laughs> before she was good. Damn You're it. Start oh, with no. that one. Yeah, that's the Metropole. Okay, I want to say something different then. I want to say sorry for spoiling to build a fire. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so John is definitely rushing something out here. We got to figure out what kind of agenda suite John is on. They could be sweet ass five threes. Could yep. be three twos. A lot of people are running only five threes. Upgrade on R and D. What is that about? Mumba virtual tour. If there's a bunch of assets in here, maybe does does Esmari do? No, really. Uh, I think if we get an agenda on R and D, it's super dope because we can bounce this. This could just be uh, what's her name, the lay uh, trace five tag, Bernie Smy. I think mm. we find out what this is. I think we do gamble, gamble, run, and then install career for Okay. Sure. Because if we get a balance, it's really gross. We always clear the tag. That's a way better end, yeah. Prediction, yeah. John will score a seven-point bill while Andre and uh, Patrick desperately wait to get gang signed. We'll go <laughs> fast. So we're going to hit the IP block. It's pretty good against Turtle. It's a trace, though. We can sometimes deal with that. Unres is a Jinja City grid. Fun. <laughs> it's going to be great. If we trash that and install that, we're going to pay 9 credits this turn. It seems like too much. I honestly and don't have that much news. R&D pressure this turn that I don't mind about this. They, we know they're going to draw an IP block and they install it for free. Is that worth spending 5 credits for? No matter what, if we spend 5 yeah. here, we go down to 8 and we have to click for credit. We can't install it there. Thrice. I think we let them Jinja. R&D really? pressure okay. is not is, what we care about. Are there situations where you definitely trash the Jinja? Yeah, I, if I we're like, running I ice. Like Jinja is such a valuable card, especially in a server that has no ice. 
You think we trash this? I think that he's going to get so much value from it if we don't, right? We trash a whole six power grid. <laughs> so many people rely on that electricity. Ah, <laughs> boy. Okay. I honestly don't want to trash this. All right, all right. Let's not. We'll see how it goes. Oh, well, okay. We also didn't pay attention what Eric, uh, sorry, what John called. John named event, so we might have wanted to pay more attention to mm -hmm. that. Sub is Guardian Princess. Ransom Man, what's up? Probably Ash. I think we probably should have left that, but I want to see how this goes. Wait, oh. who's the Asgardian princess? I'm not actually sure. Oh, princes. Oh, it, it actually <laughs> is princes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Ginger is good for you since their HQ becomes nothing but agendas. That's true. It looks like they're going for the jam here. We can assume that's the IP block. So the best case is that we like we fisk into um and I, I if we could easily fisk into um uh, inside job. Yes. We sure. can also just run this. It makes them res it, which means that we can't bounce later on. But like this ice has to cost less than yeah. uh, three credits a lot of the time. Sure. Unless it's an IP block. We can also run R&D first, hopefully get the bounce, and then just run this and we bounce the ice. I think that's fine too. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm okay with r r running that one. The but draw first. The problem about having two dirty laundries is, yeah, drawing for dirty laundry is not as good as having three dirty yes. laundries. But I think we draw first because no matter what, we're not going to fisk this turn. Well, do we want to do any events? Uh, we're not because we're trying to drain him of money right now, right? So we, it's not so easy to advance that card. Yeah, we'll so see. maybe we. I, you're right. We probably don't play that. I mean, yeah, I but, think no matter what we draw. Though, yeah, we draw first. We're gonna draw sure. turn. Okay. Yeah, like that's a really okay, good card. Okay, yeah, that's a good thing now. to play. We actually fisk into gangs. That would have been gross. They also might be only running six five threes because this is a forty card deck. Oh man! And also installing things is is really good if they're playing things like degree mill. Mm. So if we install both of these. We go down to uh, five credits, which. If they do credit credit, if they do IP block card hitting news, it's really rough. Ugh. I think we're going to take the risk. They only have three cards. We know. Yeah, let's take the risk. And we also install a bunch of resources at once so we don't get hit by scarcity. Yeah, that's nice. Never an advanced card in unprotected R&D. Yeah, sometimes that just doesn't work out well for Leela, but I think they're probably on 5 threes considering this. I'm going to catch the rest of YouTube later. The semester isn't over. Hey, good luck with the rest of the semester, Ben. Um, I'll catch you on the YouTube. Bye. Leela always nabs agenda. That she does. It's an NGO front. Huh. We did run, so hard hitting news is really rough right now. Even Sea Source into, into Gang Sign is pretty bad. So yeah. I think we might have misplayed horribly. I need to re recall of the wild. Oh, we are fucked. They have a lot of money. Hit us with the news. John, no. Oh, thank okay. You. Okay, so they're playing a Glacier deck. They yeah, probably yeah, actually okay. don't Clearly, have it. Yeah. So one card in HQ, we're pretty sure that's an IP block. We don't want to let them res it. Mm hmm. This is only when you make successful runs, which is actually really interesting because um, this deck is actually running more honestly than a lot of Leela Gangsta decks. Yeah, that's decks. true. All right, so, so he's not naming event right now. No, naming so we can start, But we, do, we I don't, don't, we no, don't no, want to fist yeah, play that's that. That's, that's, that's terrible. Because then they just jam an agenda we can't contest two ways. Yeah. So we have to play slow while they're playing slow. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of breakers. Oh, mm. no, this is all really bad. Fill my front. And that it's and no Geo. Oh, oh boy. Uh, Maybe he should be naming these streams. Hey, yeah, <laughs> we have to figure out how to name these streams well. Yeah. So, Wait, well, hey, you said I named the stream well. You did. Yeah, yeah you did. Okay, yeah. I'm saying we got to do it consistently. Okay. But no, you've been two for two. It's been pretty good. Uh, I mean, do we want to give him more? Like he has. Oh, yeah, they named resource. You're yeah. right. I feel like this card's really good. It gets to the toll booth. They might be on an endless EULA, which a lot of people like a lot. I think just getting sure. credits has some value in this matchup. Yeah. Does Abing Nails bypass ability negate toll booths? Uh, toll. Yep. Cool. Because you bypass it on encounter. Nice. I'm gonna toss this. Uh, do we need two of these? These they're, they're generally run mm. good co-gates. I like this a lot. Four credits to get through tollbooths is pretty sweet. Yeah, I I think keep them both. That's too bad. Yeah, it sucks. Turning wheel doesn't need to run to be successful. 100% it doesn't. So we could slam into that and then like inside job R and D or like sweep all of HQ. And it actually has a fair bit of value when you're playing Lila when you just need to get one bounce to go all in. Abigail does not negate toll boost toll. Pretty sure it should. Does it not? You need to be encountering. Yeah. Yeah, but Femme Fatal it's currently is not encounter, being in... right? Mm. It's a paid ability, so it happens after the counter. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Good to know. The NBN ID has made me rethink all the expensive NBN ice, like Flare. Nine costs six strength for with a trace six or seven. Oh, the core set ID? Flare is okay, but at the end of the day, if the runner has more money than you, you almost never boost it. Okay, yeah, sneak, so... Sneak Door has potential. Sneak Door plus HQ has potential. I think we can wait till we get our mod down to get more value. Oh my god, yeah. So the question is whether we want to put mod down, so if they score an agenda, they we get an access from HQ and a mod, yeah. or whether we want to get um, HQ interface down. 
Now, this puts us to zero credits, Oof. which is really hard to recover from, but both yeah. of these are really bad. They also called resource, mind you. So, like, we don't have a lot of good to do here. We're going to throw out some cards. So, we could just put down Maw and click for credits. This is the only sneak around the deck, which means we can't Ew, throw it out. Yeah. There's a chance we actually throw out the Fisk, but actually Fisk is really good, too. There are break currently being countered, which is after the win encounter. Ah, oh, shit. Hmm. Fem is triggered. Okay. It's a generic core flavor time there. <laughs> what are you thinking? Um, man, it's both really bad. Going down to zero against a deck that might be running Hardy News is pretty bad. But this mm -hmm. one specifically is, uh, it's probably more disruptive if they're playing combo. Yeah. I think they're playing a lot of ice though, so I don't know. I'm That's true. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be as disruptive if all they need to do is play ice, right? Yeah. Okay. The thing is, if they're only running three pointers, the access of disruption is better than seeing two cards. Maybe I'm wrong. I think we're tossing uh, one of these fisks. Or yeah. I know. I think we're tossing an Abingdale. Yeah, especially now that we know that Abingdale isn't as efficient as we thought it yeah. was. I miss Deckmaster. They were cool with the role play. I don't like know what that is. <laughs> yeah, John's role play is awful. Deckmaster, didn't we play? No, Deckmaster was someone you were playing against on Ooh. stream. They were playing like a. The like, Deckmaster. Right, right. Yes. The Deckmaster. They were yes, like yes, a super yes. villain of Netrunner. Yeah. I like them. Yeah, they were actually really cool. Whoever they are, whoever that masked stranger was. It's not you, is it? It wasn't. Ah, oh, dang it. I okay. know. How great would that be if I was the villain to this particular stream? What do we draw? Okay, so the name oh, the resource lamb. again. We have on the lamb, which is pretty good against tag punishment. It gets her a lot of stuff. And they're triple advancing this thing, which makes literally no sense unless it's a Beal or the ability to score a 5-3 and then recover whatever we bounce, mm -hmm. which is pretty sweet. That's so this, usually, yeah, that's like the basic counter we would play, yeah. right? Just slightly over advance so you can... This seems like a Fisk into our HQ interface turn. Yes. But we're going to discard a whole bunch of shit, but we have to do something. No, I, I agree with that. For Martin, sure. thanks for dropping by. Uh, thanks for, for coming in. Also, the deck master was one of the coolest things in a long time. Yeah. All right, so we got some options here. All right. I wish we had more money, though. I do wish we had more money. We could go ahead and career for down the turning wheel, just get two cards out of our hand. Uh, we could but also we, inside we jump want HQ. To play a resource. 13 to oh, 15 credits really doesn't matter that yeah. much. If they were at four. That's true. I, I guess, like, at this point, we shouldn't be letting him dictate what we play because. Yeah, they're already play. ahead. I don't know. As far as just good, a lot of times it just fires. Mm -hmm. I learned something about managing my investments. So they're going to have a lot of cards, so we definitely get this down. Yeah. <coughs> so it's either we throw out a lot of cards or we just career for the turning wheel. I'm fine with that. It's I our think, last yeah, turning wheel. career for a turning wheel sounds okay. And so out of all these cards, this one's probably the worst. It gets us out of hard hitting news, but we can probably just not run for a while. Yeah. If we drew an Aeneas Informant, that would have been dope. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. Fisk Sneak Door, we need more money than that because we lose to hard hitting news. So mm -hmm. hopefully we disrupt something here. They scored a quantum predictive model, so we're definitely okay. gonna gang sign first. Yep. Card from hand, biotic label, which we just Oof. we just mod the biotic label. Oh, that's that's good. really good. That feels okay. And a beal? Uh Yes. Okay. <laughs> Big fan of what just happened. That yeah. went good. That went real good for us. Oh my god, we Oh wow. These decks are running Caesar's Exchange, it's typically not hard any news. Yeah, I think this is a Caesar's Exchange deck, considering mm -hmm. Quantum Kitties there. So they're running Raven. Yeah, for, yeah, absolutely running Raven. That went really well. Yeah. Damn, we're good. Yeah, they could be on hard hitting news. A lot of times also these decks are running like two hard hitting news, one sea source or whatever, like in flavor Austin combination mm -hmm. we might not be familiar with. Alright, so he had one click left to install Ice over HQ. Yeah. That's fine. The double bounce is really bad. We could them. even well, it's not inside job, but still. Inside job is honestly not terrible right now. This deck also is running, um and mind you, is running uh They've got one agenda, we got two. Just saying, just saying. Uh, this deck is also running um, a credit kiting to get the cheap fem right, out right. it matters. Yeah. And that's actually pretty sweet, but there's like nothing we do besides click for credits. But here. credit kiting, you have to run HQ first? Any central server. Any central server. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, there's no play here besides click for credits. If we were really scared about this, but I'm not really scared about any face down cards, <clears throat> mm -hmm. something like an Amani Sanai could be really obnoxious. Um, but they also need to score out. And they're on fast advance. So we've seen like a fair bit. We've seen already six influence out of the top. Yeah. So they're at fast advance and glacier. Yeah. That's an interesting. Thing. Maybe they have enough Just... HP cards that they run Jeeves for free. Mm. Is that how Jeeves works? Is Jeeves? For yeah. Free? Yeah. Jeeves is an alliance card. I don't think we have a play here besides click for four. Otherwise, yeah. we threaten nothing. That was less worth it than I'd hoped. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good exchange. Have you tried credit kiting, Sunny? Pretty fun. I haven't yet. It looks really good because yeah, it has the true. power tap value. Yeah, that's a great value on that deck. 
A data pack. Oh, we forgot to do the news segment. A data pack came out today, and there's a card that seems so good with white hat and bezel. If you've oh seen it. Oh my god. That like I kind of want to either import white hat and criminal or embezzle and sunny. God, I think... Sunny's so good now. I like it so much. Credit cutting and taps four one nine is awesome. I never really got into the credit cutting taps uh, gameplay, but I know people really like that one. So how much do you think trashing <laughs> that Ginger City grid actually mattered? It actually might have mattered. Right now, it's it saved three, well, like basically, it would have saved him three clicks and three two credits at this point. Yeah, and the fact that they can reinstall to fight Leela seems pretty good. Yeah. We would know what all their ice is though, which lets us intelligently mm. fem in inside job. This also probably is. Uh, I don't know what that is. I think we have to draw here, but yeah. Like, what do we do? Draw? Oh. Hmm. We get values inside job HQ, but I don't know. I'd rather just, like, what well, we... We have to, like, install Mongoose, click for three? Like, this is miserable. You have five credits more. I think that's probably one of the better parts about that, Mike. <laughs> Mike yeah. caught a very, very crucial part of that exchange. Yeah. So Mongoose actually isn't largely that good against uh, NBN. They don't run that many cheap sentries let alone sentries that you care to break a lot of times mm -hmm. you can just trace through it can i see mongoose for a second of i course. can't remember what the uh okay so it it doesn't quite get up to raven or, no or raven, raven is a... always cheaper to trace because this yeah. is five for raven and that's yeah so we can install the abbing nail i think we can probably draw it once hopefully that will oh god that did not work out well for us mm -hmm. uh i think we tossed the mongoose to for toss the credit. Mongoose credit yeah yeah i don't think we're gonna need that one uh Two fem is actually pretty good if we draw our thing that lets us do the thing. We can install this, it goes down to zero, which really, really, really is terrible. I think we're gonna toss a fem out. We're so poor, I don't know whether we're gonna install two of these. Yeah. Yikes. My sleeping pill is creeping in on me, so I'll have to catch the rest of the stream tomorrow in that case. <laughs> hey, Lumil, thanks for dropping by. Yeah. Glad that you're getting uh, a good sleep at this point. Um, I've heard that was not that easy, so sleep well, huh? Mm -hmm. That criminal economy, yeah, criminal has a lot of things going <laughs> for them. Mind you, they just fisk themselves. They did a Rashidi Yahim, so they drew three cards, mm -hmm. which means, like, pretty good if we get another HQ interface down yeah, there. Yeah, sure. Yikes. Draw and check Mongoose and IJ. IJ is... Inside Job? Inside Job's such a good card. And we only have two of them. We have all the Inside Jobs in our deck. Yeah, I think we want to keep that. It's less likely that we'll install two fems in the mm -hmm. game than the fact that we can always just, like, Inside Job HQ. Well, oh, okay, less so, it. but still a bit. Still. So we could hold on our sneak door bidder for a while. They just played scarcity, mind you, and mm -hmm. called resource, which is a bit greedy, if you ask me. I think yeah. you might want to spread that out. It's not mm -hmm. like they need the money that much. Okay, so do we do we do sneak door run now? I don't think we need to make that's like a play. Yeah. And in this game, we're trying to figure out where the agendas are. They probably have one server one, one in hand. Yeah. And if this unless this is breaking news or what's it called, 15 minutes, it's gonna be hard for them to score it anyways. So if we wait two turns for them to advance it, we can do sneak door job HQ. Like we want to get the best tempo play hmm. instead of like going for this and hoping it works out. That's fair. So we could wait for like Aeneas Informants, which they are probably running some trashables. We've seen a couple. Uh not that many. Or another HQ interface, which makes it a lot better. I think we can just draw through this. That's really good. That's a good one. That actually is really good. It makes the IP block um, an issue. Mm -hmm. We always have paperclip to get through. We can overinstall it. But basically, every time they score, we access HQ with Gangs and we get counters on it. Yeah. And we know there's an IP block right here. So we can always just suffer. I'll solve for that click too. I think every other card in their hand is pretty good. Or click one, excuse me. The big sneak door is always good. As soon as they ice it up, like, I don't know. They're just putting so much ice on central servers. I don't know how much ice they have. It seems like, well, there you go. It He's like watching nice this stream. It's a nice heavy deck. Yeah. Allison, what's up? New to the game. Can somebody explain what net brain meat damage is? Yeah, firstly, thanks for dropping by. If you're new to this game, asking a question is so good. So, basics. Damage is damage. The opponent takes a card from your hand randomly without looking at it, throws it out. That's damage. Yeah. At any point in the game, if you have to take more damage than you have cards in hand, so you have two cards in hand, you take three net damage all at once, you die. So, damage, health, cards in hand. Yeah. Net and meat damage are identical. They're just damage. They're just thematically based. Meat right, damage exactly. is real life. Yeah, and net damage is like what happens to you when you're jacked in and get shocked or something. Yeah, it's through the net. Now, brain damage is also ripped a card out of your hand, but after that's done, it lowers your hand size permanently, which is checked at the end of every turn. Yeah. So if you have one brain damage, generally at the end of your turn, you're going to be discarding down to four cards. If you ever take more brain damage, and not at once, but you can actually have negative hand size if someone like on three on six different turns does like six brain damage, you will die if you have negative hand size. That almost never happens. They res that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. Puppy makes a good point that the Amakua made them install ice on archives to prevent Amakua getting too strong. Also, Harrison would point that installing turtle weakens a sneak door play. No, the ice dark has a response. Uh, it's probably very true. That being said, we probably want them to res it anyways. We could run archives. They spend money on this. They called resource again. Uh, once we know what that is, we could consider femming it, but it's pretty bad, actually. I think the best thing we could draw right now is for another uh, HQ interface or another gang sign. So we have like four and 24. We have one and six of top deck and a sweet card here. <laughs> okay. Even a Fisk would be good. That's good. Uh, yeah, that also right, the sneak okay. door made that really bad, too. Mm, mm. We need this, though. Because we can always, like, you know, sneak door HQ, then fem it, and then, sorry, like, inside job archives, fem it with the, the credit kiting and then run. Then we have to clear tag. Oh, um, that's right, because credit kiting, again, you need to run on central Yeah, server. you have to run central Can I, uh, whenever you ex yeah. I, I don't know uh, any use inform it. Any use inform whenever you access a card and don't trash it, we get credit. Okay. So this can give us some money when on HQ. Not a lot. It's not mm. worth that much, but it's some. Um, this deck feels so poor. Yeah, this deck used to run, like a lot of these decks used to run Tabworm and or uh, Peace in Our Time. I don't think this deck has Peace in Our Time, but I'm used to more. Yeah, this one doesn't. I'm used to having more economy in these decks. You're right. I don't, I don't feel great about the economy. We got some value inside job there, but that seems pretty rough. Man, all these cards, huh? Ooh. Yikes. Oh, I don't want to throw this out. Oh, this is so bad. Yowza. It has to have a trash cost for Aeneas. Aeneas? Yeah, it has to be a trashable cost card, right? Yeah, it has to have a trash card. Yes. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Upgrades yeah. and assets. Cool. That four card swing from Aeneas. Um, with the icing a new remote that's generally a mistake because we can run that for turtle counters every breaker of the start is the opposite of what criminal wants yeah it costs money and it's expensive and we don't have ways to make money mind you this deck did really well at Canadian Nationals so just just saying that looks like an Amani Sanai yeah probably okay uh, so we have some really good draws here do we? oh wait this costs two credits because of fucking scarcity and we gave him two credits Oh, that was such a misplay. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, that I thought that was free, and I was like, why do we only have three credits? That was terrible. Yikes. Okay. So we can always sneak door this, or sorry, inside job this. Seems bad. Especially it, if it's not what we think it is, and it's something more expensive to trash. Well, regardless, it basically gets one turtle counter. Even Geist wouldn't, doesn't want the but he can be able to discard it. Maybe, yeah. What's the ice IP block or Raven? Not actually sure yet. Yeah, now they realize. Yeah, we realize now. It's fine. Okay, so that if we had last turn, if we drew once more, that would have been really good. We don't have a play here. I don't get this in this deck. I don't know why we're playing this one. Uh, uh, I think we just have to, like, draw for another, uh, play three cards for a gang sign. Yeah, we're playing three cards for a gang sign. Okay. This is really good. Uh, well, Fem is so hard to play now. Abbey Nail is good. I think we're throwing an inside job. Another gang sign. Uh, okay, good luck, guys. And man, he's four to trash. Yeah, it's gonna mm -hmm. fire likely. This seems pretty rough. And they'll bounce our Maul, which is kind of rough. So they're gonna score this res than Mani, I guess. Dirty Laundry only good against CTM. Yeah, it was better against Acid decks. And this is an older version of this where you could like Dirty Laundry get a Neus and Form encounters. It had some value. And then Maul would fire. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to access four cards from HQ, so if they don't score the agenda here, we definitely go ahead and Fisk. They also might put two agendas on the table. I don't know how crazy they are. Also, if they don't pre-res this when they score, we can um, we can bounce it, and there'll be something with a trash cost we can access, and maybe yeah, we'll recover true. from that. Cool. Yikes. <laughs> four credit swing, and we install this. Five credit swing. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We're also assuming that all his ice is like two credits or so, two to four yeah, credits. Yeah, their ice is probably relatively affordable. Okay, so they're slow rolling this, whether it's a BL oh, or man. not. So that means... Well, what else do we think it could be? Five, five three. three? Yeah, okay. Food. We haven't seen restricted cards. We're definitely going to go ahead and do that. Now, these cost five. We don't run any currents. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is dead. So I think we just going to click for three. We also consider pressuring, um, but we, we're not going to install any of these this turn. We can throw both of these out. We can click for three. Installing this was definitely wrong. Yeah, so. Okay, this is fine. This is good. This is good. 
Or just playing with a friend. Yeah, well, they have eight cards in hand. There's definitely agendas in there. They almost only have 15 cards in R&D. Mind you, it's a 40-card deck. So remember how we're going to play where those agendas are? This deck runs 18 agendas. And right now, we have 15 cards left in R&D. So we're more than, what, 15 out of 40? So that's more than halfway through. Yeah. And we've only seen three points. So like HQ is probably loaded. This is also probably two agendas on the table. You said this deck runs 15 agendas? No, 18 agenda points. Oh, 18. Well, right, 40. because of 40, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like this is probably loaded. So we just need to bounce one of these. Uh, we could consider inside jobbing this. Uh, we could also just like flat up run archives. It seems pretty bad. We want a sneak door to do that. Oof. We can also just click to like n around nine of credits where we can do fem sneak door. That's actually a 13 credit play plus. Hmm. Uh, we could sneak door HQ. We're pretty sure this is the IP block, which would be rough. <laughs> but that at least makes them spend money. So if they spend enough money resing this, we could... Do we know what any of this stuff is? I don't think so. Parallel, what's up? How's it going? We could sneak door HQ. I think I'll think there's two agendas here. We know that's no longer in the money Sanai, but they're in a still pretty hard place. Drawing the next Fisk would be relatively good. Maybe they just didn't res, <laughs> res the money Sanai because oh, they Oh, had... they just res a Jinja. Oh, okay. So that might be in the money Sanai. I'm just taking four. We're clicking for credits on the match ball good. How do you feel about that? What? You know, here we are. It's my fault. I know we're here because of me. It's not at all your fault. Right. Why would it okay. be your fault? You did the Amakua. I did the Trash Ginger Grid. I installed the Aeneas for four credits. That was a hell of a thing. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, yikes. I think we just want to take money. That's yeah, fine. Good, thanks. How's the running going this evening? So far, we're okay. Click for four from Mike is right. And it's another Jisminder. They're going to mill themselves. John has 11 cards and the stack is on one agenda point. Yeah, I'm... I it's was, either big beal or bust at this point. Right, I was thinking about that earlier. But he, but he can big beal, of course. In theory. He can big beal in theory, but also in unless theory... We, unless we get eventually in. Eventually, we do fem inside job. Yeah. And on HQ, and we get in. Oof. Playing special report to shuffle, that's a cool card that gets the agendas out of HQ, so R&D might be good. But they might redraw the same agendas, mind you, mm. if you haven't seen this card. We also have to move our face out of the Glacier territory. The lack of running is what makes Lila gang signs. Yo, <laughs> generally this deck runs. Like, this deck is built to run. It has turning wheel and breakers, but, like, our economy is not falling. It's falling apart. We need liberated accounts. We need stuff like that. Yeah. There is one more Fisk in the deck, so maybe we can win by decking them. Uh, it's going to be... Oh, they, they scored food last click? Everything's gonna fall apart real fast. Okay, we bounce, do we this bounce first? that. Yeah, uh, we, yeah, we, we bounce, bounce that first. That first. Okay. My God. No, there's agendas in here. We definitely don't bounce that. Yeah, we bounce that first. Yeah. Why would they score? Because like we can scarcity trash sure. an unknown card. So archives ice has some value. NGO front. If we don't trash that, we get an Amakua and a credit. So let's not trash that. Okay. Yes. Global food, that's good. Why that's not? another bounce. So we yeah. got two bounces here. So we can bounce go here and run HQ straight. R &D? Or I like or running HQ. We have okay. we have a double access. Sure. Uh, oh my god, no. Uh, we're good. That seemed good. I know you don't like 419 taps, but this is a really aggressive 419 build if you wanted to try something more aggressive. VK, you want to throw that? Uh we'll we'll check that out around eleven o'clock when um when uh yep. Pat's on his way. I'm afraid to try to score because of darn Leela gang sense, but what can... Yeah, they do not do anything. So, like, just sitting back, we're now on six points. Unfortunately, if we do run, they can do C source. Uh, there's also a face down in archives. They might throw out a second one. Hmm. And our runs on HQ are really good right now. There's an NGO front in there, which gives us credits and counters. Oh, we stole. Ick. Ick is right. I was hoping the opponent would go for a six-point build. That would be so sweet. Yeah. So naming hardware, they're playing around the gang sign. I think we can just start <laughs> running here. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just hit them. Lovely, the Happy Thursdays, Maui. How's it going? So this is double access with the Maw. That's really strong. Hit an IPO, trashed something. Hit an NGO front, you can keep that. Actually, yeah, we get Aeneas credits. We don't get Amakua because we actually trashed something. Oh, no, we didn't trash something. Corp did. So this often is like Desperado. Newtown, that's a good piece yeah. of ice, IPO, okay. So we got Turning Well too, which is pretty good. Yep. Uh, we are weak to Caesar's Exchange, which puts them on seven. Oh, no, we're not gonna trash that. IPO, okay. With our last, are we running with our last click or do we want to like put down daily casts? Putting down on daily cast puts us harder away from Caesar's 
exchange. I don't think we need the money right now. Like, okay. we just have to get one agenda. Basically, like, we inside job R&D a lot of times we win. Because we can see, I want turning wheel counters. Yeah, that makes sense. Because that makes sure we win. Because there's no more agendas in here, which means there's still a lot of agendas in R&D. So mm -hmm. inside job uh, R&D generally wins. Yeah. And he needs either a 5-3 or an over advance to be able to win at this point. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, the NGO is an issue. Build a turtle counters while you can. I think it's good. Because they can't purge. They kept the counters off your turtle by feeding you agendas. Very shrewd. Very shrewd indeed. You never expect that. Can inside job archives? We can, but it looks like nothing's leaving archives anytime soon, so that's like a panic play. I don't expect like heavy uh, preemptive actions. We didn't see any HQ. If we saw it, preemptives in HQ, we'd consider inside jobbing archives for sure. They're toying with them like a quantum kitty on the cross. <laughs> Alright, they're back up to 25 to not get punished. Do we know these cards? It's NGO front and I think a second NGO uh, IP block. Hmm. <coughs> All right, we're playing the control game. Or it's New Sound because they didn't want to put down New Sound while there's no current. Yeah, but they did put two ice, so we saw no ice. So I think they're top deck sure. ice and New Sounded. That's what I'm assuming. I think one of them's IP block, but I think they threw out an IP block. Archives definitely can have an agenda, but like we're in no rush. Yeah. Uh, so this pays off in two turns, and that's as good as clicking for a credit. Is the game going to go on for two more turns? I don't know. We're also can I, I break think, new I sound. think it will at this point. I think we just run HQ, right? To see what they drew? Because like new sound we break for one credit. Yeah, that's true. Like what hits us bad here? Like getting a tag and then giving him a quantum. Well, if we have a tag, we just jack out. Sure. And we get turning with, yeah, let's run HQ. This will, this will probably go okay. Like they can definitely res anything. But like if they res a toll booth on HQ, oh that's fine for us. We're not gonna win off HQ. I don't think we have to check archives right away, Dite. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. This gives us turning wheel counters. So, like, right, this is actually, I think, a really bad play. Right? Because we can just get turning wheel counters and then inside job RNA. Right, now it's a, just a turning wheel yeah. farm. We do have to hit a lot of buttons, though. Are we going to run R&D with our last click or just... No. Uh... No. They might purge. Purging. Oh, yeah, purging from Amakua. That's true. They could purge Amakua, but, like, we have Fem inside job. I'm feeling pretty comfortable that we can just click for credits. Yeah. So actually, you're right. The seven counter here doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If we play this, yeah, uh, maybe we do inside job R and D. No matter what, we can't get through a wraparound on it. Oh, actually, we could. It'd be all our money. Don't poke R and D. Install sneak door and go through archives. I want them to res this before we sneak door archives. Um, to talk to you also, how's it going? Play the other cast. Click last credit. I think six is the magic number. We want an even number on here, so seven doesn't matter that much. They might put another ice here. If they top deck an agenda, they might just jam it though, and they have to top deck a food, and it's only one more in the game. Actually, they could do Beal as well. If you go to seven now, you can do ten counters R and D. Last click. I think last click we'd also need fem and stuff. I don't think this will pay off soon enough. All right, so gain credit. I think gain credit's fine. Gain credit and go for the the mega turn. You get stuff by toll booth, lightly stuff, not hard stuff though. Slamming the turning wheel counters is right. Yeah, it yeah. makes R&D real scary. So they went for the purge. So that was our window of running R&D for sure. Uh, we're pretty sure that's a news hound there, which is good. I think the IP block actually is here. Okay. But we could <coughs> fem inside job R&D now. Uh, fem inside job R&D puts us on <coughs> one credit, which means we can only bypass a one subroutine ice. I think worst oh, case right, we yeah. have to prepare for uh, six subroutine ice for a EULA. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of a, a piss off. Mm -hmm. but So I think we could go slow. There's another Fisk in our deck. There's a Liberated. Liberated with, uh, what's it called, is really good. And they just named the Vent, so I think we can definitely draw once. Yeah, there you go. Mm. So we install this click for eight. That's basically like clicking for two cards on three clicks. On the next turn, we can do four, four, Fem inside. Yeah, let's do that. That seems really good. Worst comes to worst, also just inside jump archives. There yeah, might yeah. be an agenda in there, as far as we know. I'd be surprised if there wasn't. They have an NGO front, though, so they actually are committing. Like, they're forcing us to interact with them. If right. they do install Advance Advance, we have to go off next turn. If you keep farming turning wheel counters, you can see all of R&D soon. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Fisk into it would be so perfect. Oh, my God. Brutal. They're drawing, which is really good for us. Uh, well, we can I would actually love to line see that. Up that fisk wow. Lethal. Oh, no. <laughs> and mind you, they are playing Beal. Uh, we haven't seen more influence. We've seen so far, like... A bunch and there's just special reporting so hq might be f absolutely flooded <laughs> i mean special reporting means r d is more has a bigger chance of being full of agendas we honestly no idea it's full random right right because the two things are not related i guess yeah that's a good point uh we could we could cash our check in right here and go liberated liberated a femme inside job i don't feel like we have to do it right now 
No, I guess we can wait. Yeah, unless they're they not have, rushing us. Unless they have three biotics and then can do a crazy... Okay, so next play. time they'll be on five. How many tokens do we need? We need ten to see all of our R&D. We need less and less to see all of R&D as time goes on, too. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's Oof. run here twice, take four. So that we can probably see all of our R&D. Yeah. Are we going to draw at all? See if we can get that? I don't that. think we need to. Because then we have to run HQ. And I'd rather run R&D. Or just make sure we can't get C source stick chains really well. C source needed a successful run anyways. Everything went wrong, but Gang Sign is stupid. Well, mm. We played it well. <laughs> Only need eight to see five cards. Oh yeah, right. So we can see all of R and D this turn. All right, jamming something. Card and server one. What's the chance that every card in R and D is no longer an agenda? Very high. Very very high. Because this is three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's say this is a food. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Where do we think it is? Oh, uh, fucking hell. Okay, so we can do Femme. Okay, I think we do Femme, Abignail, Inside Job R&D, Run Archives. We can see all of HQ or all of R&D. Chat, what do we want? Okay, we could... Mm, we could save the Sneak Door for an HQ run, comboed with something. I uh, know. We not. lose this turn. Yeah. We, it's too, too little. Probably NGO. They shuffled, though, VK. We don't know if they have an NGO. Yeah. Like, they could have special reported their NGO. If you Femme Inside Job fails, then you can Sneak Door the rest. Femme Inside Job. Sneak Door. Run. Likely. You only see half of HQ with Turning Wheel? No, we see all of it. Yeah, we see five. We see five. Yeah. Actually, we see mo less. More, because we have <laughs> HQ interface. Yeah, puppy is not rooting for us at all, uh, huh? Puppy doesn't Man, like okay. this. That's fine. I think we're going to go for R&D. Yeah, sure. It's fun to see all of R&D. And then, worst case, we install Abigail Run Archives. Sure. It's a three snare, so we'll see how it goes. So we also have a Sentry Breaker, so we can break New Sound for a while. <laughs> uh oh. That's what I like to hear. Mind you, this duck does run more than that. All right, so we luckily inside job that none of that matters anymore. I'll bypass it. Imagine we spelled that correctly. Half without turning wheel, plus one from HQI, plus 0 0.5 from Mama. So Fem gets through everything besides guard. So this we're actually not going to encounter, so that's perfect. We call that right with the IP block, so we're just going to pay two oh, to Oh, so we don't that. even get the tag from we IP block. We don't get the block. tag, because this is when the runner encounters, and this is yeah, uh, when you encounter that ice. So this actually bypasses that as well, just like Tollbooth and Raven. So there's a lot of really good Fem targets here. We can still break it for what it's worth. Taking the tag only matters for the Quantum Kitty, which actually does matter because it means we get one fewer bounce if we don't win on this for some reason. Even mm. just getting a bounce is good enough. Yeah. You don't actually have to win. That's true. The bounce will be I almost forgot to take all these counters. <laughs> Jeez. So this is one, two, three, four. That's all of it, right? I believe Sir's dead. And there we go. That is GG. Yeah. So we'll return that. Card from deck, NGO front. We're not going to touch that. New sound. Mm. IPO. Is there only one in there? It's only whoa. I mean, like you're right. We had seen a lot of them. Don't forget, turning wheel almost did. Just need to break one of the subs. Yeah, no, we femmed it exactly, so we're perfectly fine. Yeah. I wonder if it's an archive. So, like, let's think of that. If that was that was another food, so that was a beal. That's three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and they probably have three kitties. Hmm. So there's either so two more there like 15, 15 minutes. Archives, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 50 minutes is probably better yeah. than third kitty, right? The beal for the win was in S1, none mm. in archives. Oh, really? Two okay, because we're considering go running archives there. Yeah. What did you have in HQ? Two, oh, two QPMs. Okay, so either play was a winning play. Because we only have to get one together bounce, but we yeah. would have got all the kitties for sure. Cool. <coughs> I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. Hey, good game, John. Always a pleasure. I was worried that you were going to go fast enough with all your ice, and that's actually pretty good. This ice is really hard to deal with. Now, mind you, our deck had some really good stuff left in it. Like, two HQ interfaces is obviously good. Gang sign is good. Oh, John, if you want to, you can type res all in chat, and that does it. Like, that, I think? That. Um, ooh, Mirage on the remote. Like, things are really good here. Earthrise, obviously, we wanted to. Two more career fairs is a fair bit of economy, but the deck doesn't have enough economy. Uh, I think this deck 
rely largely it was probably this version specifically was more strong when there's a lot more assets because you could dirty laundry you could get an es credit value and you can actually kind of snowball it so like controlling the message deck is actually a really good matchup resol ace ace so we can see after the res all what was in archives and it looks like we got a scarcity out there i think a rashida got milled and not much else timber is asking is little engine good and some people are saying it is right now a seven strength code gate is kind of hard to deal with now people are running things like grappling hook and all that and that's fine i think actually a really big thing about this ice specifically against like those grappling hook decks is that any ice that has two end the run subroutines is super good, especially something that's high strength. It's it, it's actually really good against a lot of the things that big ice is weak against right now. Things like Kangamato and Gabahali don't break this on its own, which is relatively great. Uh, Femme Fatale also is pretty bad against this because you have to break all subroutines. David is relatively elegant too because you can only break it once, which is really good. And the seven strength Kogi is hard to deal with anyways. Like I guess with eventually when you get like data suckers and um, ice carvers, this does fall apart a bit. But like as a rush ice, rush, rush ice, it's not that bad at all. Like breaking that honestly with Abignail, well, what do we have to pay? Two, four, six, seven, eight. Like we have to have eight credits f f up front, and then it costs us three. So it's it's a great rush ice for sure. It's kind of like the opposite of endless EULA, which is not. It's I don't know endless EULA in this would also be pretty good. Four to break with orchestra isn't awful. It's not terrible, but like it's not four to break overall. It's also you need like what? Nine. And offering someone to like having nine up front wall also on standing your black orchestra is pretty difficult. Not a huge Shinteki user. Hey, no, no, no uh, issue. I was seriously flooded in HQ for a while. You could tell <coughs> the fact that you weren't rushing out was a pretty good sign. So we just wanted to sit back, get down our gang signs. The Cindy's was not worth the money, but usually isn't cool um thanks so much for the game john pat how are we doing on time on your end uh let me see yeah 20 yeah, i guess got about 20 that's not enough for another game is it no not really okay i mean i can watch half a game oh okay we'll do a game okay cool uh let's actually do the news segment right now i guess um sure. not uh, that much news in netrunner this week i imagine there's a breaking news graphic here uh, but this is whispers in Nalubal. Nalubal. Don't know how to pronounce this one just yet. But I'm, I'm putting a bit it. of a spin on Nalubale. Really? That's just that's where like my brain's it. at. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I wish you know. You should put jackpot in that deck. I don't even know about that. Um, <laughs> that's a weird card, right? Yeah. So we got 20 new cards. We got the next Adam Five Influence card. If you don't want to see this, maybe you should get a drink right now and come back in a second. Uh, but the art on Logic Bomb is. Delightful. It's great. It's a good old Adam yeah, Doyle. Yeah, it's an Adam Doyle, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Freedom, who is the Anarch Virus uh, identity we've seen for a while. We have some cool criminal cards, a really good Jinteki 4 2 for damage decks, yeah. some asset or some, uh, sorry, Byroid support. Some really cool stuff in here. We'll be doing an unboxing. I was, I'm going to pick up my data pack tomorrow, I believe. So we'll have an unboxing actually likely by Monday, which is pretty great. I think Overseer Matrix is the most interesting card in the pack. Halloween X, how's it going? It's a weird card. Uh, have you seen all the cards? I've seen them all, but I don't remember what they all are. So this is Overseer Matrix, which is a defensive upgrade that deals, it's a Wayland card that deals with tags, but it's a defensive upgrades hmm. for other defensive upgrades. Yeah. I don't know. I've been arguing <coughs> with people in our meta about whether this is just worse or better than having just a prize sec instead, which is the other, uh, it's like a tag based neutral mm -hmm. resource. It's not Wayland for some reason. Um, and I don't know. I think this card is specifically the cutest with like, like, get three of these in the server. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. I mean, it's definitely interesting, and uh, it'll play with weird decks that run a lot of these things. It, it's 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 cool. One to Therese, four to Trash is fantastic, and uh, you got to pay some money, though. Yeah. The Blast doesn't hurt, but what comes after does. That's cool. I think the Blast hurts, though. Anyway, I'm not going to argue with the card. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... um, that actually is the cover art. If you want to do that thing with John, where you talk about all the cover arts, this is the cover art for a pack that came out, like, two packs ago. Put this right, yeah. Uh, the Overseer Matrix, that is. Yeah. Why not both? Exactly, there, but I think that's what you need to do. You need to do both of them. But that's why it's clumsy, right? If you draw one and not the other, it's not great. And then you'd be like, I just wish I drew a Prysec. It's also cool with things like Force Connections. Like, there's a pretty good upgrade support, but you need to draw and install all at once. So maybe you're running... Oh, I keep trying to say Jisminder Serene when I mean... Um, 
that other the lady that came out of the, the last the, pack. the neutral lady yeah draw three green for three i keep forgetting her name i keep goofing it i say either just minder serene or like the other one which hmm. oh man i'm sorry that's probably a bit ignorant uh uh, uh, man. Here we are. Find out just how awful. Uh, Rashida Jaheen. Rashida Jaheen. Rashida. I also keep saying like Rashida Jones. Mm. Like I never do it right. I stopped saying Spiderweb for Paperclip though, so we've got somewhere. Rare case, but it could also help against someone trying to imp a City Works project. That's super rare case though. Like that's kind of hard to argue whether that's worth it. Oh, you reminded me though, Halloween. One thing that I want to do. I don't know why we haven't been doing this yet. We gotta start motion no shinning uh, city works projects. Yeah, of course. That's, why are we not motioning no, this? We gotta motion this. That's all such day. incredible value. It's like, hilarious. Right? Like, that's great. It's like face up. Oh, take five meat damage. Yeah, it's, it's it, like it, I think I guess like thematically speaking, it's like accidentally revealing that you have a full house in your hand, yeah. right? Oh man, it's so it's so weird. Uh, Ransom man, you keep calling her Rashida Jones. Yeah, it's, right. Yeah, that's it's, it's gonna happen. Uh, asking whether this works on central servers. Do we still have the open? When the runner trashes a card in the server, no. In the server is only installed in the server, so mm. the root of the server is actually not in the server on central servers, and cards in the server... Okay. Cards in the root of central servers, no. Because they're not in the server. Central servers are weird. Uh, in the remote server, everything inside, yes. Whether some card is... I, I don't know, honestly, no. Maybe? Yeah. Maybe? Also, that's a good point. Dedication ceremony is in faction. So Mushin no Shin... Dedication? Oh. I, I didn't mean both at once. I mean, like, dedication ceremony is probably better than Mushin no Shin because it's the same thing if you're talking about a face of agenda, right? Yeah, but do both. But do both. Yeah, yeah obviously yeah, yeah. do both. Harrison, well, yeah, dedication ceremony in faction, that's good. Yeah. Rashidi, that's it. Many meets. I don't honestly know. You can't Mushin behind ice. You definitely don't ice it up. You definitely don't ice it up. Mushin, dedication, though, will be really fun. The problem is that card's so bad in central servers unless you can punish it, but I don't know. Um, otherwise, in terms of Netrunner news, I can't, f like, fully give it the Metropolitan Grid endorsement because I haven't read it yet, which is not great. But uh, Cry of Frustration put out... It, it looks, oh, I read that. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, it's nice. I like it. It looked pretty compelling. This is basically the next thing I'm going to be reading, mm -hmm. but it's, like, a pretty good um, explanation of how... It's meant to explain, like, the last couple of years of Netrunner meta. Uh, this also video, if you haven't checked out it, from Trace5. That's from Christian. you got to check this out. This is really good. Uh, but this is a thing, so check that out. I think the other thing I wanted to say in terms of news is that we've actually been missing Netrunner news in a meaningful Netrunner news for a long time now. Uh, <clears throat> the last time we got any news about new Netrunner products, mm -hmm. and by products I don't mean playmats, that was actually the 6th of March, which is now two months ago. Yeah, and usually once they've announced something, we get a monthly update, right? Give or yeah, take. give or take. It's actually sometimes sooner. It's usually like three weeks or so. Mm. And the thing is, we don't know what's coming after Rain and Reverie. We know Rain and Reverie is the new Deluxe coming up, so... There might be a huge gap here, considering also they have a new designer, so the new cycle will take longer to go. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, maybe ho don't hold your breath or hold your breath, yeah. but this box looks exciting regardless. It really does. It's so cool. <coughs> does it work when they trash from R&D, right? Not the root of R&D? Uh, it depends on what the UFACO Waroid is, because I honestly don't know. Uh, yeah, probably. Last time they had a long holdover, we got revised core announced. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the thing is, we have a new designer now, so who knows. Hmm. Therabrate, I don't know. That's interesting. Uh, we're going to have the UFAC relatively soon. Uh, largely, that's what happens, considering the card, the packs just came out. So we'll see on that, but I honestly don't know. All right, let's get another Leela game in. Uh, Patrick will only be around for a bit of it. Yeah, I'll probably be leaving in about 10-ish minutes. Yeah, that's okay. Oof. Yeah, I wonder what other big news there could be. Like, are they going to start rotating the big boxes? Honestly, I wouldn't be that upset if. Yeah. Because I've seen people talking about how, like, some cards using Katara kind of replace cards from Creation and Control that we otherwise think of as essential. Yeah. Like, also, like, Rain and Reverie, I think, has a new clone chip. Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think so. Or maybe it's the last data pack. Yeah, the spoilers? last data pack has it. Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. spoilers. Uh, yeah, like a compile is very much like a SMC where you yeah. can install a card mid run. I yeah, kind of. Yeah. It's kind of more like an inside job, I think. It's an interesting card, though, because yeah. it's, it's not permanent, right? Right, right. It goes away. Yeah. But it's also free to install. So. I lived it, man. 
Um, I'm worried that any super long gaps in news will hit the player base hard. I agree with you. That's mm-hmm. always a chance. I'm worried that the game is fragile and they're starting to rebuild from the last drop off. That might be a case. Yeah. Um, this the, man's really good. The the new players, uh, some of my coworkers of mine have just gotten into the game. They haven't really played in the meta yet at all. But when they saw news of Brain and Reverie, they got really excited. Yeah, well, it's a good <laughs> so, jump so, in so, yeah, like yeah, the, the the fact that there was this one one new big box has actually excited new players. So that's something. So. Um... I don't think it's a great, probably not a great jumping off point if it has many factions in it, though, but... Yeah. Uh, okay, a couple things going on in this matchup. We're playing against Tenon, which means two things. Firstly, they're probably advancing Ice, which is really good for Leela. Uh, secondly, they drew it as a last click, which is generally a mistake. Uh, they also have reasons to either protect Archives or Ice Archives, which means Sneak Door is not that good. Hmm. So we could play slow or we could play fast. A lot of times they're running spiky decks, so hitting a snare right now would be pretty... Like, it's a reasonable trade, considering mm-hmm. they go into two credits. Yeah. They so, did. They did draw last click. Huh? Yeah, drawing last click is never good, but a lot of players don't fully plan out their turns yep. uh, entirely. So something that's wrong. I think getting a run on centrals is probably fine. Snare is the worst hit here. Yeah, faction uh, starter decks would be really cool. I wonder if they do new cards. That'd be cool. That'd be that'd be a risk though. Is, is the Game of Thrones doing new cards or is it? Oh, scary. It's good to know. Yeah. So they're definitely trying to do damage, or this is for clot. Mm. Um. Yeah, like you look like a nail. Sorry, I cut you off. You're saying uh, but starter. I was wondering if the Game of Thrones starter faction specific starter decks are using new cards or just cards that already exist put into a one concise package. If anyone knows, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you look like a nail. Mentioned that they just dropped X Wings 2.0, uh, yeah. which is a game I did not think it would reboot. I thought that game was like really doing well for itself, but yeah. I don't think a reboot means the game's in a bad spot. I mean, the, also... the, the reboot is coming out like almost simultaneously with new stuff for the first edition, which is really interesting. So. So, I think we could run now with Amakua out. Yeah, might as well, right? Uh, Snare is still the worst because they could trash both of this and this, but they pay four for it. I don't know. We want to run once a turn. We know there's one arc lockdown down mm-hmm. here. We can't steal Obakata. If we play a side game, that'd be good. If they're running three twos, they're easy to steal. So, Kakugo. Eh. Okay, fine. They reg- run regular cards in okay. Game of Thrones starters. Did you even have poor Lila last game? No, Lila's fine. Drink when Andre discusses the importance of planning <laughs> one's turns would be a good rule for our game. They're going all in on R and D, huh? What do they know about R and D that we don't? What's with R and D? Why are they letting us get free runs on? There might be a snare in there, but we know there's one R clock down, and that's a Kakugo. Why are Probably they doing Kakugo, that? Yeah. So this is likely um, Hokusai. It could also be a Crazy Magrid because it makes it sure. an unsuccessful run, which yeah. is kind of sweet. Yeah, that's true. That's a good combo with Tenon. I think we draw once more. Dirty laundry. Oh, turning wheel okay. run. That'll be great. It's risky against uh, against snare, but like uh, we're gonna get value from here. And mm-hmm. if cards pull up an HQ, that's really good for us. Love this. I have to get to work tomorrow. <laughs> plan your turn, y'all. It's really good. You gotta plan your whole turn. So we get a successful run here and a turning wheel and probably an Amaku again. There's some bad hits here, uh, but it's mostly snare. This is a lockdown. It's a safe hit. We also could get surprised by hard hitting news. Also, oh. a Duded Wall is a card that just came out that looks pretty good in Tenet Institute decks. So maybe they're playing. Oh, is that the, the Wayland Mythic Ice? Yeah, yeah it's really which interesting. Advances on things. Cool. So, Ice Up Archives. They did toss out one card on turn one, and it was their last draw. So that actually might signal that they have five cards in hand. They're like, wait a second, I want to throw out a Breach Dome. So yeah. they drew sixth. So there might be a That's Breach a Dome point. in Archives. Mm-hmm. We obviously don't want to lose the Sneak Door. That's a really valuable card because they might not Ice Archives if there's a Breach Dome in there. <coughs> is this the kind of game where we want multi-axis yeah okay yeah snare would be bad but because like likely it. playing against Leela, they can manipulate their hands so that we hurt ourselves very badly whenever we mm-hmm. go there uh if they are running a lot of traps if you want to play really safe you can always bounce ice first true and then access Dilute HP. yeah so you don't hit two snares or you're less likely mm-hmm. i think setting this up is good if we don't make a successful run they get one advancement counter but if we run next turn we can always bounce the one advancement counter dice so yeah i don't mind that much I also think it might be a damage deck, so we're going to try and discard as few cards as possible. And this obviously means we're on gang sign. It also might mean they want to prepare for the sneak door. Pone hysterical. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Do you? Is that a word? No. Maybe it, Maybe they're trying to say eponymous? Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it might be a nice portmanteau. Hmm. So, they're not rushing us in any direction. Arc Lockdown, I think, well, actually does mean damage. Uh, they also could be running, like, Marcus Betting to trash program subroutines. Mm. And there's a free advancement counter. They just went ahead and purged. We only had two counters on that. Wow. They're playing a real slow game. So. It's all right with us, though. 
<clears throat> Although Anonymous it, it, and hysterical. There you go. Okay. So we run archives. We have a one in five of it being bad. I want to see how bad our luck is. Oh, we lose off the top of our the stack too. That's okay. Yeah, there's a breach dome. I fucking hit the one in five. <laughs> I hit the one in five, my dude. Yeah, you really did, huh? Well, here we are. Ah, here we are. This deck should have two of this. This card's way too good not to have two of Man, I am glad I'm heading home now. Oh, boy. No, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Uh, that's a breaker. All right. Let's run, hit a snare, and lose it. Yeah, all right. So this is good against DNA Tracker in a pinch. They might be playing a slower game because they have bigger ice. Uh, the best draw right now is because they can, can in theory, trick a light next turn, is that we could hit a gang sign, which we did not. And I don't want to discard a card here, so let's go ahead and just put down the breaker before we lose it. Ah, oh, fish, mm. fish, fish. They're waiting for a trap to put down. They also could just be a straight-up trap deck that they install advance, advance. Yeah. What's fish, fish, fish? I don't know, but it's actually a really good emo. <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot. That? Saba ping? That's good. First install card in the server is a trap calling it now. All right. It might be. And the thing is, if they do that, like, we can just run central servers and sometimes bounce motion cards. We have a lot of outs against, like, advanced spell traps. They're also drawing last click again. They just did draw, hedge fund draw, which is slightly worse than what it could be. Okay. So, two breach domes, maybe in archives. There's a gang sign we want, so we can just take some money up. Leaving four credits on here is not that important, honestly. We're not worrying about C source exchange or closed accounts. Yeah. If you're worrying about closed accounts, keeping four on a liberated, that's generally a pretty good play against uh, MBN identity uh, because if they purge, you still have somewhere to go for four. Did they just purge one counter? We got to find our Fisk stat. Oh my god. Because the, the game has to go the way we want it, not the way that they want to slow roll it. Maybe they're on like Red Planet Couriers Biotic and they're going to score Oh my god. Out. I don't know, like vanity projects i like vanity project it's, it's i remember card. when that card was before that card was spoiled i think whoever was spoiling cards during then on reddit said it was like it's a new card that does three things we've never seen before yeah and i was like well what could this possibly be but it's an agenda that has six advancement requirement One was thing. worth four points cost influence which is the first time we've seen agendas cost influence oh uh, yeah right and possibly was blank also maybe it did four things that were completely new Oh yeah, it has it's, no. It's, it's, it's entirely only, blank. Yeah. Is that the only blank card in the game? Whoa! Yeah, the card's all flavor tags. <laughs> That's totally wild. This card's good. It dismantles fast advance. Unfortunately, we have nothing to career fair, so I think we can just click for two and probably throw this out. Like if they're not playing, or click for three. Excuse me, we're not playing either. Where's my diesel mason jar emote? Yeah, I think <laughs> I actually have the emotes that we're gonna have on the channel. Um, I think we're gonna start with two. I think diesel and mason jar probably won't be one of the first two, but it'll be common. Uh, but uh, mason jar pickle juice, like what you feed your guests, or yeah, no, yeah. I just diesel, sure. right? Um, but I we I just gotta find someone. I need commission the art. Dazzler, what's up? How's it going? Thanks for dropping by. They're racing up everything, and the thing is, like, if we never run R and D, we're always gonna be able to bounce a three advancement counter ice. So That's like really spreading satisfying. it out is probably a bit better than mm -hmm. going all in. Mind you, they just drew yeah, three times on turn. Cards. So Fisk gets a bit God, stronger. Fisk, right now, that'd be so good. Oh, man. So great. And they're throwing in a bunch of cards. Uh, oh, my God. We just got to make sure we don't deck ourselves and don't die to snares, and that's largely going to be good enough. Okay, so we drew in some dead cards here. Uh, these are both dead cards, so we might just want to click for four and throw everything else out, yeah. which is largely rough. You don't want to throw out cards. We could run archives. Um, the worst here would be like a cortex lock, which would do a substantial four damage, which is not great. I guess we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna play some good old netrunner. <laughs> so we're gonna give them their advancement tokens. So far, it doesn't seem to matter. Have you seen the new pack? Just got mine today. Pigman, what's up? I know what's in it because spoilers are a big thing. Um, but uh. It looks cool. I'm going to be picking it up tomorrow physically, and then we'll review it or unbox it this weekend, I yeah. hope. Discarding seems like a waste of hit points. It totally does, but we don't have much else to do. Yeah. I think you can farm turning wheel counters on R&D. You're right, actually. This is likely the, the thing. The thing is whether or not we want to bounce it is interesting. Also, like, multi axis is probably not that good <laughs> against, like, a spiky deck. But you're yeah. right. We could, we could, I want to bounce Kakugo, because as soon as it rests, we don't have a good answer to it. Yeah. <coughs> Also, hey, like, hey Brazil, that's cool. What's up, yo, Alan? What's up? Howdy from Brazil. Been a while since I caught you live. How's it going? 
are you doing? Thanks for coming by. My voice got really high pitched in the last like minute. Well, you're very tired. This is the way your voice goes when you get tired. Running pr- parallel. I missed it. When do emotes come in? Emotes will come in as soon as we actually capitalize on Twitch partnership. I've been informed that if we do for Twitch partnership, that we can't stream to both YouTube and Twitch at the same time. So I have to look into it. Because mm. if that's the case, that doesn't sound as enticing. Because for obvious reasons, we don't want to do that. 27 cards left. We have 25. They have to draw every turn. We know how to click for four. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. We're Here playing that runner. Uh, who was it who said this card is definitely a this Falglos saying this card is definitely a trap? Uh, hmm. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I think you want to bounce a triple advance ice could be a horde of a colossus, it would be a blowout. Yeah, it could be. Uh we could go ahead and career for the earth rise. It forces us to draw, which makes it easier for us to not much. It makes us draw, which is kind of bad. What's the bonus to Twitch partnership? Um emotes. And then the ability to subscribe, which would be uh, money coming in, which would be cool, I guess. Um, that's largely it. Twitch streamers often do the live on Twitch and afterwards put on YouTube. Yeah, that's one thing to do it. And mm-hmm. there's a very good viewership on YouTube. I love streaming on YouTube. I'm really glad that we started doing it. I'm worried to some extent that like there's a couple thousand people that are subscribed to YouTube and now they're getting regular notifications. That might annoy some people. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I guess you can always turn off notifications. We're just gonna not interact with this. First one's a trap. Is what we call. Down with YouTube. I want to see some network <laughs> when it's oh man. It's gonna ask you if you do an unboxing. Always love to hear your thoughts. The new parasite is crazy. The new parasite's really weird, right? Yeah, it's not like it's, it's fine. It seems it's, reasonable. Yeah, it's like it's Maybe. weird to say that. Like it feels like reasonable ice destruction. Probably even less than great. I don't know. Hmm. All's good. Random comment. I've been watching your stream replays at twice speed, so now you sound sleepy at normal speed. Ah, uh, yeah. That's how normally it goes. <laughs> All right. I should get going, huh? Yeah. I'll ha- show you the door. Um, I'm going to show Pat to yeah. the door real quick. Thanks, Goodbye, Pat, everybody. so much for dropping hey, by. It was a pleasure. Bye, everybody. Nice to see you. Bye. We'll be seeing Pat definitely Bye. in the near future. Uh, give me one second to plan out this turn. We'll be right back. Found the unmute button. We're great. Okay, cool. Uh, we got to plan this out. I don't want to run any of these things. I'd actually rather run this one. We'll run this one. Psychic field's really bad, but that's largely it. If that's the case, let's install that. Nothing else is that important. Uh, one second. We got it. Cronus. We, we did it. So, I think we definitely bounced this one. This is one that matters. Nothing else really changes the board. It also puts them in a really rough spot. Uh, we could bounce the ice, obviously, with advancement tokens on it, but, like, they would have trickle-lighted if they could trickle-light it, so. Mm-hmm. And such job's not actually looking that great. Instead, dropping a three advanced ice seems valuable. The Fisk looks really good. Man, we just walked away, and then we thought for, like, three seconds, and we made this, like, dope play that they thought we were, like, really thinking about for a long time. 
Uh, it's yeah, we lied to a stranger on the internet, which is not good. Uh, how's it going, everyone? Not liking this Leela deck too much dirtling. It seems pretty dirtly, yeah. It really does. Uh, they are advancing, installing a lot of things all at once. Do you know YouTube thinks you stream is about 1988 game called Neuromancer? It does, and it thinks everyone who like makes Netrunner content is playing Neuromancer. Like, uh, Hacktivist shows up on it, Bayokin's videos show up as Neuromancer 1988, which is a game I ought to play at this point in time. What should we talk about while they're not here? Just chuck the turning wheel? Yeah, we don't need two of them. So, some of these are clearly traps. Some of them are clearly probably agendas. If they score a three one, I don't care. We have Maw and double uh, HQ interface. As bad as that could be, we could actually go ahead and fisk in, but then we'll probably have to discard cards, which is too bad. I don't even know if we have to go ahead and like, dirty laundry one of these. Like, again, Psychic Field could be easily be lethal. Uh, there's not that much else we're worried about. I don't actually think we need the money here. I think we can just click for three and we'll probably be okay. And also, if we take damage on their turn, if they want to score one of these, we'll be drawing up to two, which is fine. Cross Project also does nothing besides we have to care about our, our um, paperclip. Love the book. I'm reading the book right now, actually. I like it a lot. So, firstly, this is for net damage. This is actually a really good card in our deck. Because as long as we have more money than them, which, mind you, we don't, we can avoid net damage. Also, as soon as they single advance a card, there's very few things we have to worry about. Because they're basically telling us it's not Psychic Field, it's not Snare. So, fuck, we run it. Um, this forces the corp to trace zero. If unsuccessful, they avoid any amount of net damage. So, they have a lot of money, so it's not like the end of the world, but it helps. Shimmer like, what's up? Face plant into traps. It's an option. Oh, they can advance anything. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Um, no, we can take the damage here. I totally forgot that they did that with their ability. Yeah, that's a snare. Uh, no, that's fine. We lost our fam, which sucks. Well, if we don't trash that, we maw. I don't think we trash that. They have enough, like, trickle light counters. Uh, so we're going to hit a maw here, which is pretty good. We also get uh, Amakua. So we goof that a bit. We lost the fem, which is good. Uh, we can, in theory, draw up here. Second field actually isn't that bad right now, so I'd consider running server three as well. Like, just run one of them. I think they would have scored if they could, so we'll try it. Don't break what's up. They always advance the psychic field, right? Oh, fuck. Okay, we found it. No one home is a lot worse when they have three times your credit. It's it's okay, but you're right. It is a lot worse. So we got to win the side game here. Damn, we're good. Oh, we got to go ahead and remove that tag. So we found two traps. Neuromancer is a classic. I'm like 100 pages away. Please don't spoil it. I'm enjoying it immensely. Oh, no one home is... Yeah. They use their ID for that. Yeah, it doesn't have to. 100%. They just clicked for credits. They were all traps. I think they might all be traps. Luckily, we can like fisk out of it. We also found out where one snare is. We also could consider running this before we run anything else. They didn't... Yeah, they probably want to fast advance this, right? I don't even think we run this. We can fisk up. <coughs> Excuse me. Well played. Been trying to make classic cocktails lately. Today is Manhattan and it's lovely. What's in a Manhattan? It's like orange and scotch. It's like scotch and orange juice, or orange peel, I think. I don't actually need to play the sure gamble. Like, we honestly don't need to play this. Uh, they're going to start with nine cards in hand, so even if they score this, I don't care. So I think we can just, like, click for three. Leela's really good. I think we need to get red some ice. I don't want to do that. Are the other books in the Neuromancer series worth reading? I read Neuromancer, like, six years ago. wondering if I should continue. Did Gibson also write Snow Crash? I think Snow Crash is also, like, a classic. Are right, there trickle lighting, which means it's a 3-2 agenda, which means we can really, like, go nuts here? Actually, it's a double trickle light, so it's a 4-2. So we're going to go ahead and do gang sign first, because we want to steal agendas. So uh, we'll get gang sign. Card from hand, that's an early MP. We trashed something. That's another early MP, so their hand is loaded, and it's an IPO. So we can bounce one card to HQ. Uh, we know only what this ice is. We don't know what the other ones are. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we bounce here, but they used two. Snow Crash was Stevenson. Oh, yeah, right. That makes a lot of sense. I have them queued in my e-reader. A friend told me they're pretty good. Snow Crash is not good. So. Count Zero and Mona Lisa Overdrive are both great, but not as good as Neuromancer. Uh, running Parallel saying I like Count Zero and Mona Lisa Overdrive, but they... Wait, sorry. You guys said, like, a very similar comment. Dang. 
Actually, three people all want us to say the same. Four people. Okay. Uh, all right. So they're all on two points. 17 cards left in the deck. We actually could fem run HQ. We just saw two neurals in here, so I don't even know if that's worth it. We trashed two cards at random, so the running archives has some value. Not a lot. Uh, not a lot of traps, probably. I don't even want to play any of these. I really don't want to play any of these. If we don't trash the snare, they can trickle light at the end of their turn. So there's some value in that. I think we actually could just like fem this, but then they'll just reinstall ice over it. So it's not great. It'll get us a maw fire, which has some value. And they're not running remote servers. So the fem on the central server is better than anything else at this point. So we'll run HQ with a click left so we can clear the tag. Gang suddenly with maw busting out the big guns tonight. Ration, how's it going? It's good stuff. IPO, Nur, a Nazi. That's something we're glad we didn't fem. Neural. I'm really glad we didn't fem that. So, we could run again here. We'd likely get a counter on our turtle, which is really good. We also get a turning wheel counter. If we hit snare, it's pretty bad, but we've seen a lot of cards here. So, the chance of us hitting snare is likely low. A Nazi, IPO, Neural is what we're going to see. So, don't know what we trashed. We go into Manhands, try a Dumina Rouge instead of a Sweet Vermouth. I tried Vermouth like a while ago. I actually really liked it. So let's pure Cyberpunk with the Space Drama is really cool. Lots of similar stuff to Netrunner in it. I love how many references there were in Netrunner to uh, Gibson's Neuromancer that I wasn't like aware of. The idea of calling things ice that protect your servers and protect your console and your rig is, I'm thinking originally from Neuromancer. I actually might not know uh, too well. We also have four counters on Amakua, and Nancy is five strength. Um, we only have 13 cards left, 18 hit points altogether, and we want another gang sign, I think. Now, we actually need to hit them to fisk them. Like, we are playing... Remember how we decided we were going to be playing... Oh, they just played Archive Memories for an unseen card. Uh, you know what we're playing? Where's the agenda? We They're not an HQ, unless they just pulled one back, which means we want to fisk them and force them to draw. Uh, it lowers our life expectancy a wee bit, but we need to do it. Also, running Archives is probably not terrible. With 4 strength, I think running Archives is fine. None of these cards matter that much. Intrusion Countermeasure Electronics. That's from Neuromancer. Yeah, I think Ice in Netrunner is a bit different. It's Intrusion Countermeasures. It's not Electronics. There are dozens of references, yeah. Okay. Well, that worked out really bad. If we steal the Obakata, we die. So we're not going to do that. But we know it's in there if we need a bounce. So Breach Dome is going to hit... That's six damage, and it just hit another Fisk. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, that went terribly. We just hit all our Fisks. Oh, man, that was not good. No. Did we, I think we mod some of those. Good thing, though, is we hit two Trick of Lights. They probably have one more Trick of Light. It's not hard to guess. Um, it also is kind of the deck to be running preemptive, or the other one that lets them recur cards, but that's pretty pretty rough. Armitage code busting is a reference to uh, Neuromancer for sure. All right, this actually we don't need right now. This has a bit more value. We died a double snare. That's actually it. Yo, Ben, what's up? Good morning. Good morning. Is it the morning where you at? I thought you were on the East Coast. How are you doing, Ben? On the plus side, you can run HQ. In the forward of one of the newer editions, Gibson calls himself out for tolling, totally failing to predict cell phones. All right, so they, they brined. We really don't care about that. Genotyping. Thank you, Jim. That's what it is. Um, yeah, there actually isn't a lot of, like, uh, headsets and, like, things to call people in, uh, in Neuromancer now that you mention it. It's morning somewhere. Neuromancer is a huge influence on Android, yeah. I'm really enjoying the book. Uh, I like sci-fi a lot. Um, I don't read enough. Patrick is like a voracious reader. A lot of times he's lending me books. I think the last book he read, lent me was this. It's called Spin. I forget the author right now, but it won the Hugo Award a couple of years ago. You got to check it out. It's so great. Um, the basic premise is one day the earth just stops spinning. And what happens? It takes like decades to explain the story. It's great. It's totally worth checking out. Um, but I'm on Neuromancer now. I'm going to try and do all the classics. Yeah, there's no wireless communication here, man. So one of the iconic scenes is Case walking past payphones as they ring. Yeah, right. He's in the hotel and the payphone rings. And it's, uh, well, let's not spoil that, I guess. All right. We need to keep his hit points. Uh, we have a Sentry Breaker, Koge Breaker, and what's likely a Barrier Breaker, considering they're probably not running. Maybe they're running Chiyashi, but likely just the other one. 
Robert Charles Wilson. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Spin's great. How much into fantasy are you? Not at all, really. I have. Uh, it's not something I've been averse to. I grew up reading like Redwall, whether you consider that fantasy or not. But uh, the color in the camera keeps flickering. Apologies for that. Um, I'm not very into. It. I never got into fantasy, especially high fantasy. All this stuff is fun and well thought out. I only read Spin. I know there's other books in the universe, but we just I never got to those yet. So Obakata and Bin, Obakata's in hand. Stealing the Obakata in archives is probably a winning play. Um, but the problem is, uh, if we steal one in HQ, we were like pretty dead to, to neurals. I also don't want to play this because this is forces us to draw cards. This is enough multi-axis, gang sign and two HQ interfaces, let alone law. <coughs> Mind you, we don't know what this is, but they're probably running three psychic fields. So I think we just click for three. We're going to play some honest net runner, which means clicking for credits. I'm so sorry we're doing this. Yeah, Timberlang, Redwall was pretty great. I loved Redwall as a kid. I didn't love the sequels to Spin. Chronolith was great. Just read last year his new one, which was solid. I think I looked at some of the reviews and everyone said Spin was the best one, which is not that surprising considering it did win the Hugo Award. I remember reading The Legend of Luke from Redwall series and really enjoying it. It's really heckin' dark, though. My parents got it for me as a kid, thinking it was a cute animal story. Those books were really dark. They were very, very dark. Uh, shipment from 10 and coming back to HQ. Um, I think Moss Flower was my favorite, which is the second one after Martin the Warrior. Legend of Luke, I think I read that one too, but it's been a while. We're going to play some Honest Netrunner, running through Chumps, Gangside, number one, click for four credits. Like, someone's going to be clicking for credits. Drawing a card. So they have a shipment from hand, which means that we're interested in making a, a, a single run. We are interested. This could be data loops. Mind you, they have nine cards left. Imagine we had these. Imagine. So they basically have 10 turns to win. If they want to score two medical breakthroughs, it's pretty difficult. And they could actually be throwing agendas into archives. It seems relatively good for them. I don't actually think we want to install any cards here. Our, our last fem is in the bin. So we have one more Abignail in the deck. One more turtle in the deck, I believe. But not that that's that useful. And we can always get through DNA tracker in a pinch. I don't want to draw. I don't want to install cards. This is the only play. I believe he's the inventor of cyberspace, both the name and what is in cyberpunk settings. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know enough about the history, but like, oh man, I love the part, like the part of Neverner about running and like interacting with ice is so much, and, and it's a crazy sentence, right? In Neuromancer, it is so visual. Like the book is more visual than Netrunner, and I just wish that happened more often, right? They're going to deck themselves? I don't know. They might not. All right. Oh, oh. Prevent one net damage? No, we're not going to do that. So we're going to gang sign first. We actually could bounce this one. There's a chance that this is an agenda, so I want to bounce it. We're going to see most of the hand anyways. We know it's like one neural EMP. Uh, I'm actually going to leave this. I want to figure out what that is. It's an obacata. Oh, fuck me. So we didn't run. I think we steal this obacata. Uh, this is a snare. We don't, don't bounce a snare. Trash Psychic Field. Okay, so it's a Psychic Field. Uh, that's largely okay. We're not going to trash it. Neural. Improved Protein Source. GG. Oof. Gibson didn't coin Cyberspace, but he popularized it. It was mentioned in a short story previously, and he used it again. Ah. I had his name. No way. Get out. <laughs> well. <laughs> always lucky. So they had a snare in it. So they had a chance of killing us. We kind of went a bit risky. We didn't play around snare very smart, but we got the other one. We I got the other four credit swing card. And it made sense they were playing this. This is a good fast advance card. If you get one advancement counter on this, this actually might be the card we bounced. Imagine that was on a table, right? Like you put one advancement on this when you don't run it and you triple advance it. You're dead. You're playing to either win or lose there. The thing about the win or lose, it mattered on the order. Like, if we hit the snare first, we don't steal the Obakata, obviously, because we can't. Um, the Hongai grid. Get out. Uh, that's cool. Um, so, uh, largely what we do is if... Like, we had to hit the Obakata and steal and then the snare in the order. So the chance of us dying was probably a bit less likely than it looked like. Ace. Never mind, I might be wrong. Wikipedia says Cyberspace first appeared in Burning Chrome. 
No one home seems bad on a deck this poor. It largely is. Uh, this deck was this version of the deck that our friend Eric gave us was largely tuned to a CTM based meta, where this was not only a good card, but also the ability to run with Aeneas Informant and Maw was really strong. So we actually had a pretty good credit base. I agree. I think when we put this deck together, we said the cards we would cut were Dirty Laundry, No One Home. Even on the land, probably. <coughs> I don't think Neverwinter Ice would have made any sense to me if I hadn't read Neuromancer before playing it for the first time. I remember one funny story about Neuromancer. I think Blade Runner came out the same year when Gibson saw the movie. He nearly threw away the book before saying to the editor. Oh, that's really bad. True Names by Vernier Vin is awesome. Proto cyberpunk hack stuff predates Gibson by a few years. That's really cool. I'll check that out. Johnny Mnemonic. Um, somebody posted a deck list. I think VK, did you throw a Taps deck in chat a while ago? Can we play Recon Drone? That card seems sweet. Oh my god. Oh my god. Third break, come on. I think this is like the one card that I've been more regularly bringing up as in like, wow, this is not a good one, is it? This is not a fun design. This is not an interesting design. This is really boring design. It does one thing. It's dead up most matchups. I don't know. Thank you, VK. All right, so VK threw this in chat. Don't purge me, bro. Uh, we're gonna go for that chrome. If you're just tuning in, by the way, my name's Andre. Uh, this camera's wide tonight because we had a uh, Pat in chat. This is a Fester deck. Um, so this is a 419 deck. Don't love 419. Luckily, this doesn't have any actual support to it. It doesn't have any exposed support besides Amakua. So and I guess falsified credits uh, credentials. But it's a taps deck. For money, we don't have a lot. We don't have a lot of card draw either. Oh, I guess we have Laguna. Um, but what we're trying to do here, this doesn't have career fair? VK, why does this not have career fair? Romero, also, what's up? It has Fester for the Purge. There's no way this card is good enough. Three slots and three credits for only Amakua does not seem good enough. I guess it's Tapworm too, right? But they're also kind of anti-synergistic in pairs. Like, how much better would we be if Fester was just Sakon? Probably a lot better, let's be honest. My Leela has a crash based rogue trading. It's ice richer for sure. I guess actually rogue trading is not the worst idea. I don't love this card. It's really good when you have a Citadel Sanctuary. Also, three Citadel Sanctuary can't be right. Most of your resources are under three credits. That's true. I guess it's only because there's only one Earth Rise. So maybe you're right with that. That being said, I think. How bad it would be if it was Sakon and Fester? Actually, probably worse, right? Because then they really don't purge. Um, I'll try it. I think 3 Citadel probably doesn't have to be that. It's a unique card. I know you need it early, but um, the card draw, you're probably just better off with card draw to find your other Citadels, let alone the rest of your deck. Like having another Earthrise here would probably be better, or like a baby or something, uh, a Symmetrical Visage. This is Spice, so we're going to we're gonna like let this slide because it's like fun, and so the deck is doing. Don't love this card, I don't think, but I haven't tried it out, so I'm kind of an ignorant git at this point. Cynical, I understand it's critical to your engine, but I don't know. You can just run a draw card, right? And then it'd be good or bad, right? If you find your Citadels early, it's just a draw card. If you just find a draw card, you find your Citadel. So, well, we'll give it a shot. If you're not familiar with these sort of deck archetypes, people call these power tab decks. It hinges on a card that gives you credits whenever a trace happens and you force the trade to happen. You would not go below three, Dataki? Okay. Well, maybe I'm in the wrong here. I could see that. I haven't played enough of this. Uh, what did you call it? Don't purge me, bro. Letting the spice flow. Yeah, Joe, you got to let the spice flow, right? We can't all just be top deck and the Netrunner stuff. So you can play the weird stuff. And that's kind of been an issue, right? I know a lot of times I dismiss cards for just not being great enough, but we're working on it, huh? <coughs> all right. In terms of breakers, we actually got a lot. It's pretty robust. We have three Makuas. We have a Fem, which we can credit kiting out, as well as our security nesting, testing, Nexus. Shit. Uh, we have two Sneak Doors. Love that. Saker is not a great barrier breaker, but it's criminal. We've got to make some uh, gotta make some hard choices somewhere because we're spending our influence on basically everything. That's largely it. Turning wheel's really good. Let's do it. So you mentioned not liking 419. Do you happen to have a favorite runner at the moment? Uh, currently, I've been enjoying... I, we just played a game night kit, mind you, this weekend, and we played Liberated Cella Haley, which you might have seen on this live stream or YouTube channel before. Did not drop a game. It's, like, really good. It's way better than the deck is, uh, than the deck looks. Uh, it, that deck was specifically weak to um, 
to uh, that current scarcity resources because the deck runs like 23 resources. But we changed it and actually got three currents in there. We're running three copies of Interdiction, and it's a lot better. A lot of times you actually install stuff through scarcity anyways. Uh, my favorite runners probably in the whole game are Max. I think Max is probably the most fun. Max and Geist. What is your favorite art in Netrunner? That is a really hard question that I've actually been tackling, Ellen. Uh, I don't have a good answer for that, but because I've been doing some assets for the stream and I've been looking at a lot of art, and let me tell you, that's too hard of a question. Saker's good against Kakugo. Yeah, mm, it's fine. It's just not, it's not paperclip, right? But that's like, there's only one paperclip. It's called paperclip. I'm playing against a guy on Liberty Chill MSC as well. It's hilarious and surprisingly good. I think it's really good. If people are playing three-point agenda suites, try it out. Try it out. It's definitely great. It has some weaknesses with ice, specifically like any double end to run subroutine ice, it can't break. At least the addition of the deck I'm playing. So like Spiderweb. GG. Best start, Ramage and Reliant 550 BMI. It reminds me so much of the pad campaign. The the new one or altar one, whatever you, however you think of that one. I've always wanted ex executives treat art as a gag play, Matt. That'd be pretty good. All right, so we're against Titan, which is a really fast deck, which means we need a really fast start. And this is not a very fast start. Going down to zero is unplayable. This card is not fast. I think we definitely mulligan this. This is also not that useful. Oh, that's Corporate Grant. This is anti-synergistic. Just want to say, huge fan of the channel. Think you're crazy game. Oh, hey. Oh, shit. Hey. That's very kind. I appreciate it the support that's really cool that's... um i think we're gonna mulligan this we don't have a lot of early pressure so having a fast advanced matchup is already really difficult uh, and none of these cards are fast enough like we need to open with a gamble right i think we need to um that's not right that's better like we need to open with a gamble i think we need to do gamble to nexus like we need to go fast and this is not fast enough that's actually really good. This is your one really bad matchup. So sorry, VK. Altered Snare is number one art. It's really good. I'm I'm so surprised it took so long uh, to make an Altered Snare. Day Job has the best art. Day Job is one of my favorite play mats. I'm actually, I have the Media Blitz play mat. So yeah, you can expose that if you want. I really like the Media Blitz art way more than I thought I would. Yeah, we're mulliganing for Citadel, right? Does Andre only play with people with Fox in their name? We're like pretty well for that. So cards this could be, this could either be the guns, the legal arms factory, this could either be the reconstruction contract, the fast defense meat damage card, or this could be even a tech startup or executive boot camp. Either way, that's fine. Uh, we can keep the credits down. They're pretty easy at breaking corporate grants. I don't know if we want to go down to one or two credits. It seems pretty bad. Um, but we need to get our accesses in. I think we can draw once for a hedge fund. Nah, that's pretty bad. So I think we have to like just drop, drop, run R&D. So they have to ice things up. It's not great. But uh, we're down to one credit. That's pretty bad. Yeah, Rococo. Rashidi Yahim. Uh, no. I don't think we can trash that. I really don't think we can trash that. This would probably be a Rashida anyways, right? It's a pretty bad naked Rashida. How oh, we need the counters. I think I really like the Core 2 Victor 1.0. I'm still not familiar with the Byroids from Core 2. We call it the Gun Factory, mind you. Uh, not familiar with them. They all look the same to me. Uh, I'm struggling with it. Something about the Scorched Earth art and Extreme Icon, like for me, that image of Lizzie Mills looking out the window, it's really good. They're going to they're gonna let us see that this is the Rashidi him. That's good that they exposed it because then I know... Oh, fuck. Oh, uh, shit. Yo, y'all, we uh we got hard hitting news. <laughs> okay, so none of this deck matters anymore. We have Citadel. Actually, that one does matter. We got a planner turn. We got to trash this one. This gets trashed. We run R and D. We run a central. We got to run everything basically. We got to hit the boom. Top, don't top the boom. Don't let this happen. This is bad. Yeah, it'll be a quick game though, right? And we can have like a pretty good. We also could install a card event. No, we have to charge this. Uh, let's make them rest something. Uh, Hortum would be pretty good. Okay. Biotic Labor, that's fine. They have Biotic Labor, and that's crazy. Uh, we did one good run here. That's good enough. Hedge Fund, great. They're also double drawing, mind you, which means it's easier for them to find the boom. Drawing into the Citadel is too hard because we also have to install it. 
Uh, so we're just gonna run HQ again, I guess. Oh no, that's stupid because we can't even we can't even uh, trash a boom if we find it. Oh, fuck, we had it. You know, HQ is hoarding. It could be, but then they go down to three credits. So whatever, or one credits. So it's fine. We might just die right here. Ping consulting visit. They don't have enough money though, so it'll be sad soon. But they just drew hedge fund, so I think it's like hedge fund ice R and D credit. Draw for falsified? Oh man, that'd be dope. There's two though. It's only two. Oh, I keep opening that one. Oh, we actually have three falsified. Sorry. Yeah, that'd be nice. <coughs> so check this hedge fund ice R and D credit. And now we lose. Uh, ice wall, okay. So at least we can break that for credit. They iced up that on RD. I don't know what that possibly could be. If they're playing more tag damage deck, that actually could be a price deck. Um it doesn't seem that good right now. Uh it also could just be our friend um what's his name? It's likely to be our friend in uh Brian Stinson, which it's not worth playing around. I the Citadel basically doesn't do anything. It really does nothing. Why did we lost this? How do we not lose? We have no multi axes. Like our multi axes is dependent on playing a slow game. So, uh, yowzers. Uh, we have to just cleave the tags. Purge me. So they have two draws here. Citadel times three. Citadel surely. No GG. It's not gonna matter. Actually, it would have mattered. It wouldn't matter to that game. So I think that... No, it probably wouldn't have mattered. So if we did credit... Yeah, because they can't consulting visit. Citadel times three. Credit times three Citadel. Okay, wait. I, I might have played that wrong. That only plays around consulting visit into boom. That's all it plays around. That's all good. Andre Bay. Hey, cheers. Um, so, okay, so we install this, we click for three, install this, it'd be trace one, and clearing the tag for cheap would be okay. It would have definitely bought us another turn, but then they just trashed the Citadel. At that point, we would have, um, we would have one credit, we could do credit, 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 remove tag. So depending whether or not they boost it or not. Yeah, it plays around draw into boom. No, it doesn't, because they can do, uh, they can do trash boom. Because we're tagged, right? I think they draw into boom. Oh, if they could draw, we'll click one into boom. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It does. Yeah, I think the Citadel definitely was the higher chance play. I don't know. How's it going? Yeah, that's probably right. Installing also drains them. It drains them one credit, which doesn't really matter. They only need six to consult boom us. I guess it's two more to trash. What just happened? I just picked a corp deck. Oh, we're playing Lobster Modernism. Okay. Uh, this is... We keep this. Sorry. I, I'm going to play the deck again of VK. Because we did not do that anywhere near Justice. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and jam that. They don't have strong economy. This is Apex. We can get Apocalypse. This is pretty good ice against Apex anyways. I just... I, I clicked... Oh, that's... I got Okay, well. Let's go. Dang. All right, Apex games are interesting. Whether or not Apex is on Apocalypse or not, we'll gotta find out. Would you mind explaining how Draft works in Netrunner? They don't sell the game where I live, so there's no place for me to go and play. Alan, Draft was the thing in Netrunner that was like an actually supported product that you could buy at stores. They were rare, kind of expensive, uh, but it doesn't exist anymore officially. Come to see Andre playing Argus, I'll pretend to be shocked. Steven, what's up? I misclicked. We weren't actually meant to be playing Argus, funny enough. But Alan, Draft packs, what they come... So when you play Netrunner Draft, there's also draft cubes that exist. Like, people make their own drafts, so you put together what people call a cube. So you put together, like, 100 cards. You can find lists online. And everybody starts with the same base cards. So everyone starts with a minimum amount of, like, economy and agendas and breakers to make sure that you're not, like, playing nothing. Let's see what they do with that one. Um, and then, basically, you start with, like, a pack of 10 cards... You pick one card out of it, just like in, uh, <laughs> like, like uh, one card out of it, if you've seen like a Magic Draft or any other card game like that. And then you pass the pack around. And basically you keep taking one card at a time, pass it to your opponent. And then you do that in different directions and different packs, just like a drafting board game if you played like Seven Wonders. And uh, you just do that until finally you have like 
45 cards or 50 cards or some number. And then you build a slightly smaller deck than regular. And then you play the six agenda points. Draft is technically not supported anymore officially, but you can still do it. Draft cubes are really fun. There's also a thing called Anar Sealed, which is super underrated. That lets you build sealed packs if you want to play a different... Check this website out, guys. It's nuts. Uh, uh, that lets you play a sealed format. I don't know if they do draft format, but if you search draft on NetrunnerDB, you'll find um, you'll find draft packs. Uh, people make cubes. Excuse me. I think we might as well just go over that. Cube draft is super fun. Yeah, it totally is. I'll call the cause of solution to all of life's problems, Homer Simpson. Movement, what's up? Is this Eric George's deck? How's it going? No, this is actually uh, this is the deck list of the week that I misclicked on and played again. Um, it's it's based off of it's an homage to Eric George's deck. Um, it's probably better than Eric George's deck. Eric George's deck was a bit weird. Um, I'm a big fan of it though, any competitive Wayland deck. But this one's probably just a bit better. It's running atlases. It's running a bunch of cards that are less valuable. Um, Meteor also has an online draft thing. Oh, it does. That was super cool. Fun vocabulary was sometimes hear people talk about snake format drafts, but a cool award is booster feed. I don't know what that is. Uh, Reaver probably means they're not on Apocalypse because it's a really slow card. They also show no breakers yet, so we can probably just go ahead and go jam the food. If they steal it, they'll get hard-hitting news. We can do hedge fund hard-hitting news, so let's just go ahead and get this. This also might look like an IPO front. NGO front, excuse me. So you can draft online and show up the person with built decks. So Dutaki's pointing this out. If you want to go to Meteor Stimhack Allen, they have drafting online, so you can actually simulate a draft here. So this is the Quorum pool. It has these many cards in it. And then you can like draft online apparently. Host draft. Oh man, that's so cool. Meteor is a cool website. Do you have any thoughts on what Apex needs to finally come into its own? I know it's gotten a bunch of really nice tools lately, but it still seems to rely on some play, really magic combo play. So there's like two builds of Apex right now, and I'm not a master on Apex, but like Apex's strongest card is obviously Apocalypse, which is probably better outside of Apex because Apex because it's less predicted. And other decks are better at getting into central servers. <coughs> Ooh, that's a cool anti-combo card. Now, the other thing Apex can do is you can build, like, the late game. Oh, they trashed two cards at random. They actually got rid of both of our really good cards. Wow, that was a two quick play for two cards and thrown out. Um, oh, that's really good. I think we just do that. Yeah, we probably just do that. Uh, the other thing that Apex does, though, is kind of like this Reaver Pawn Shop Assimilator decks. They're just kind of like a worse shaper, which kind of sucks. What's the link to Meteor? Uh, Vicky, it is meteor.stimhack.com. Meteor used to be a deck builder that was uh, run by Chris Kiv, uh, Chris M., who was a Netrunner uh, content creator from the East Coast of Canada. <laughs> uh, very cool dude. Videos are a bit outdated now, but like love the content. Um, but uh, they Stimhack took over the hosting from it because I don't even know if Kiv plays anymore. They're running archives. I think they're apocalypsing us. Apex also doesn't have a breaker. Doesn't have a strong economy. There's a lot of issues, but uh, now they can survive a boom. Mind you, they do have heartbeat, so we're gonna have to double boom them. I think that's a huge misplay, right? It's probably a substantial misplay because now if we top deck the boom, they die. Oh, they die next turn because they had the heartbeat out, which means they don't get boomed. And now they do get boomed. So that's bad. There's an agenda in here for sure, which they can take. Uh, they're floating tags, so like these cards aren't that good. This one's actually probably the best on R&D, but we need six credits next turn. So I think we'll just click for two. This will probably give us credits, but only gives us... No, we'll just click for two and then we consult boom. That's the reason I think Embezzle is a really cool card. Steven, I think Embezzle is also a really cool card. It just came out today. But you also need to call the names right. So it's just not as good as a Utopia shard, right? I hope you didn't just jinx your game just as a diss apex that runs rampant on your grip. Yeah, they could, right? Like the four influence wanton destruction. But yeah, the Heartbeat was the best card they possibly had. Unless they install another one here, which they could. But I think it's perfectly two credits. Okay, so we win. Meteor died. It was hosting service, so Stimhack took it over. Oh, it was Meteor that died. I thought it was Chris who stopped wanting to pay the hosting. Yeah, good game. 
I was pretty scared with that heartbeat out. Yeah, I just chatted it for you. Cheers, eh? So there was a double advanced card in archives, so they're technically best play besides apocalypse thing was like run archives, run R and D over and over again. First live stream kind of never Oh no way. Oh no way. Hey, cheers. Hey, that was a big mistake. It's all good. It's a great way to learn. Should have to learn. Apocalypse is the best thing. Booming got him in here. Booming gets us out. Yeah, right? We were meant to play. We got boomed in, so at least we boomed out. So we got out of the boom tank, which is pretty great. If you do call even one name right, though, you get the money. Actually? You get eight or four? I think you only get four. Ciao. Thank you. All right, let's go get that 419 back on. It's 11.15. I am very sleepy. I had a 10-hour work day, and it's been like a crazy week, so we're not going to go past midnight, but I still think that's pretty good. Four cards per trash. Right. So if you get one, you get four credits. You paid one getting in. Definitely not bad. Ah, oh, fuck. It happened again, chat. <laughs> VK. Hey, how's it going? All right. So it's another fast events deck. Whether this one's a hard ending news is less likely. This hand's not good enough. I love watching the runner run all three centrals and resing hostile infrastructure before the apocalypse. The spicy yet very reasonable. Ah, uh, doing well. Thanks. Um, Gagar and te tech, right? Bleach, virtual bleach. Yeah, VK, this did not work out well for us. Uh, Titan is actually pretty popular right now. It's doing well in tournaments, too. Yeah, because if you're just tuning in, my name's Andres from Metropol Grid. Patrick was here this evening. Always good to see that guy. Don't see him enough. But uh, we're going to mulligan this because we're playing against a fast events deck. Best thing we could do is get our Nexus down, I guess. Wow, only three cards changed and in the same order. What's the chance of that? This is good, actually. This is good early. There's a chance actually we can install Laguna and get the Tapworm off in the same turn. Uh, yeah, you can pay one on that. At least not another fox this time. It's a turtle. Okay, so they're at six. Do we get Hardening News again? If we install this though to zero, we can, there's nothing we can play. So I don't think it's right. I think we want to get a career fair, a current, something like that. Okay, that's actually a lot better. So we can run R&D, play this, play that. It's a bit counter synergistic because we're robbing their money and playing tap for them, but with only five credits, they might not purge. Let's get an Atlas here and win the game. Free Atlas. Okay, it's a Hordesim. Okay, so they lose a credit. Next turn, we can install that against the power tap. I don't know. I really need to rush, he says. Mulligan getting for a security nexus. Well, what's the closest thing we have to rush? It looks like they're going to score a hostile, turning off a current. It makes this good, though. Not upset. Yeah, it doesn't run career fair. Going down to zero seems like a huge mistake. We have bad pub, has some value. I think if we play the Amaku and Smash R&D, the purge is just way too good. So we're not going to do that. Oh, that makes it a lot more reasonable. <coughs> Guard off the top. They have a Hortum in hand. Let's get two turning wheel counters. That might actually, actually probably was wrong. We probably need to set up. Good with the turning wheel. It's not actually... Oh, it's good with turning wheel, right? I see what you mean, Steven, but you can't trigger them. Wow. There is an Atlas at hand. So what do they have in there, Biotic? Yeah, I think they just don't purge this. Enigma. Oh, that's good. Uh... I think we can run the turtle, run R and D, and make it so that they have to res. If we don't make successful run, they can ship him from ten in. But if they res this ice, they can't biotic. So it looks like they're going biotic next turn. Oh, thank God! If you hit an atlas, you're still in the game. That's all it takes. Hit one atlas. And also now they have to, yeah, right? Because now they're going to pay a credit for this, and then we get an Amaku counter so we can get through the guard relatively easily. They're about like this to go down to one, which plays aggressively around the turning wheel. We also probably want to keep our turning wheel for running R&D, uh, for HQ, once they use an Alice counter. Right now we're in a good spot because they paid all their money. 
Mind you, all the 419 tech in the world doesn't do anything here. So we run R&D three times. We don't see much. I think we just slam it and get the counters. We also could consider using a bunch of counters and then hoping that they purge. But they still have not that many agents. Enigma off the top. That's pretty good. I think they'll purge this turn for sure. So I'm not that into it. Getting more turning wheel counters. We could get two more. We could draw. Go twice there. That's a dead draw, but okay. We don't have a lot of draw on this deck, mind you. It's like one Earthrise. That's it. Whether this deck wants to spend influence on uh, even Deuce is wild, I don't know. Criminal is kind of rough on draw. So we have turning wheel counters. They might purge. If they purge, we can just go back, though, because they can't res their guards. So the purge is probably wrong. What the fuck? Oh, they're just audacing it. Okay, well, all the Alice is out of the game. Julian, what's up? Run HQ last click? I don't know about that. We'd have to do that after, right? Like, we would do a big medium run. Okay, well, they're on game point, but... Hold the phone. So we can run R&D, C4. If they use their Alice token, we can run HQ. So actually, we don't see 4 I think we just see 3 here. Right? So we can... Oh, no, if they pull it, we're fine. So we'll see 3 yeah. Illegal Iron Factory, no, you can draw that, you can't res it. Hedge Fund, that's useless. Audacity, that's also useless. Hedge Fund. Okay, so we know the next four cards. It was free? Oh yeah, you're right, it was free. We should have done that for sure. Don't have a lot of draw, he says, well, holding Laguna, we can't play Laguna, it's too expensive. If there's a CVS in here, we'll be upset. It's likely there's a CVS in here. Oh, okay, that's good. They also threw out the guards, so I don't know what the size is. They have another Enigma in the Hive, which is now a dead card, so it doesn't seem that bad. I don't know how they're going to win. They have an Audacity coming up. Oh, they have an Audacity coming up. Right? In four cards? Ah, oh, god damn it. Uh, this actually will give us credits next turn. Let's go get let's go get some counters. Yeah, they'll definitely purge next turn. Oh, but jacking out is fine. It doesn't change anything. Actually, no, it does. We would get an Amakua counter. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. See, Embezzle would be sweet in this matchup name operation. Yeah, it would be good. You're right. It would be cool. They did not purge. We know this card. That's all we know. So much of our deck is useless. I think we just want to get turning wheel counters. And then once they install this, we'll definitely falsify credentials it. It's super easy. Hedge fund off the top. So they actually probably do credit credit hedge fund. They have a hard choice whether they purge or not here. Uh, yeah, this is rough. So Audacity is three cards down, right? <coughs> yeah, credit credit hedge fund. Okay, let's go. Let's play. So now it's hedge fund into Audacity, if I'm not mistaken. We also now get our, our, our credits from our um, Lamprey, or you know, the, the Worm. They might res here. Well, not even. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay, we lose. We have to force them to shuffle. So. Oh, wait, there's no Alice. So there's nothing they can Audacity out. No, we might be okay. Unless they're running Merger, which probably they're not. So the Audacity is not actually that good. Why do you lose? Yeah, Moon, we don't lose. We, if we didn't get the Atlas, we lose. That's how, like, fucking Atlas train works. They always have an Atlas token, so we just want to make sure we have enough counters that once we run R&D, if they pull an agenda, we can still access all of HQ. Yeah, they need a... Oh, yeah, that's right. They also need to draw a bunch. That's that you need at least three other cards in your hand. I don't know if it counts on Asti, I forget. So they just broke R&D lock by one. Uh, that's okay. Right. I don't know. What Audacity does, Audacity says put two advancements on a card. It lets you fast advance. I'm actually going to use a couple counters here. Green level clearance. Okay. Reach construction contract. No. Green level clearance. All right. Well, this seems rough. I think they heard me. So what do they do? They it could audacity for like a three one. I don't know. Do we want to just like? Oh no, we're probably fine. 
What's the chance that they're running the viral weapon, the like reverse infection? They just want to mill like five cards off the top of their deck. That seems pretty bad. It's actually in our best interest if we want to play around that one card is to not actually make a successful run and just get Amakua counters. Like not get Amakua counters because we don't need more than 16, right? Reconstruction contract is their win con. Oh yeah, J Julian, we should 100% run HQ. Last click there is free. You need to trash it? Yeah, we do need to trash reconstruction contract. You're right. But that's coming up. Two hostiles, two GFA on one new construction left. So new construction, they need dedication, reconstruction, and uh, the... Uh, that's it. Yeah, Julian, we fucked it up for sure. Yeah, we can run HQ. Oh. Okay, we lose. Ah, GG. Yeah, GG. We can't stop that. All right, well, they just scored everything out of hand. Thanks again. This deck really didn't do anything. Uh, there's no amount of setting up, though. All we had to get as many Xs as we could. We saw, like, what? A 9, 10 cards? And we saw one Atlas. Oh, and I guess we, they gave us a food. Um, yeah, I don't know. Don't feel like we could have done that better. Like, how could we have disrupted it? They pulled the agenda. And they did Biotic Audacity. So we couldn't have stopped that. It's impossible. I don't know if we could have won that game. We'll give it another shot. If you're just tuning in, my name's Andre. How's it going? Not much, not good. What's up? Uh, I should have used some tokens on HQ last click. It was really unlikely for it to work. It actually wouldn't have changed anything. I think they only drew like one or two unknown cards, and it turns out it was the biotic labor. Oh no, 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 not like that. Don't want to go for CF in this deck. Uh, this is deck someone deck gave it uh, gave us to us uh, regarding career fair. Uh, they said it wasn't necessary. This hand looks not great. We're gonna ballgame that. They already had one combo piece you knew about, so they either had to draw a combo piece on their agenda. No, what combo piece did we know of? Yeah, we can expose that. I don't know actually we knew about that. There's no disruption in this deck, so the win percent against Titan FA is probably like 10%. We actually had a decent shot at it. And Bezel is exactly what we'll need, right? Oh, I see. I, I closed it. Movable, how's it going? Yeah, and Bezel seems really good because we have no disruption. They just named resource, which is okay. Uh, I actually want to keep this current until they eventually, like, almost inevitably play, uh, they kept, and until they inevitably play scarcity, so I'm going to hold on to that. We're not going to make them lose enough money for that to matter. So hitting HQ would be cool. I think we can do this. We can do that. We can run HQ. Hard hitting news is, like, still rough. Trickle light. Oh, whoa. Okay, that's a fast events deck with advanceable ice. You knew you had another turn on R&D at that point. It was about trying to control when you can because of Alice token. The thing is, even, like, if there was an agenda in HQ, Steven, they just had to, like, use their token for... Oh, they had to pull the agenda. Never mind. So maybe you're right. I don't know. We also know this is an IP block. We know this is a news hound. So news hound is just Trace. There's a rush version that's Mario that doesn't play current. Interesting. Against our Mario, you don't want to give them singles... Of what they call if they call resource install a bunch of them that's one way of doing it for sure they just named program which we're not going to install at all uh, this means that we want to find it like daily cast and stuff like that we're not going to install programs this turn that's the good one that's the one we want mind you both of these are link based and we have link so this one seems like a good one uh None of these are really good tempo installs. This gives us Link, which is not the worst, and they're going to call Resource eventually. Trigger Light's super weird. I don't know how to play against that. Like, are they running Advanceable Ice? If they are, this is good. Are they shipping from Tenon? What just happened? Preemptive install single advance? I don't know what this is. So they shuffle two cards? They're calling resource. We check what this is. A single advanced card is never that bad. This could be a TGTBT, anything like that. It looks like it's just an NGO front, which is fine. Uh, that might be what they're using for credits, but they're advancing traps. Like they actually might be on a lot of, uh, what's it called? Like uh, ghost branch, stuff like that. 
So they have the credit lead here. Seasource closed accounts would be kind of bad, but it would be most of their money too. Mind you, we have two links. So we're at 12 to 14. I think we're just gonna click for credit. Steven says I'm often, right? Also, did they expose what that was? No, they paid a credit for it. So it was even worse for them. Okay. <coughs> Install advanced advance. They have a trigger light in hand. Could be a 5-3. If they're playing trigger lights, they're probably not playing that many 5-3s or actually a mix. So this could be a four damage to hand. I don't care about that. Uh, four damage to hand would be pretty rough. I think we just want the Nexus. The single Earth Rise. Again, this deck is not making any money whatsoever. It, it's 100% a trap deck. But the thing is, NBN's not really good at traps. So like the trap they're probably playing is uh, Ghost Branch. Which this will give us two tags. If we had Citadel, it would be pretty easy. If we install this right now, it's kind of rough. This has a chance of drawing into our two gambles, but that's most of the economy this deck has. I'm not feeling this VK. It also could, yeah. Julian's saying it's probably a Mushin deck. It could be Mushin Beal. Mushin Beal is fun. Uh, oh, if we play this, do we go down to six? We got to do something. Yeah, it's probably Ghost Branch, right? Which means they're probably on tag punishment, so maybe they're even on Hardy and these are Seasaurs. Oh, they called resource. We gave him two credits. Eh, that's a mistake. Tax the tag removal and then hard hitting news. It's an option. Uh, luckily, we do have. We're going to be on three link at least. We also do have power tap. So if we just get to the late game, most like trap decks don't work really well. Or at least tag based trap decks seem pretty favored towards us. Turn pick on R and D. Not a card you see that often. Pretty good card altogether. It's another trace though. So eventually, this will give us money. We named resource once again. Uh, we don't have a lot of plays here. We really don't. This seems pretty clumsy. This is a three of in the deck, and while it's a very good card, we're going to be playing Big Boy's deck, no doubt, next week. When's the deck list of the week? You're going to be seeing a lot of this. And this is a really good card. It's, a, it's a better when they're putting Ice Sunset on remote servers, of course. Fester does nothing right now. I think we're just going to throw these two out, because we want our link in this matchup and just click for four. Like, this is kind of miserable, but we don't have another play here. Uh, we can actually trace their new sound. We don't know what this one is. Turnpike is, what, trace five, incredibly, so... No, nah, it's fine, whatever. We don't need these. This deck also looks like it has a weak economy, so Fester's pretty good. But if the deck has a weak economy, Power Tap's not good. Or, sorry, if they have a weak economy, we're favored anyways. And then uh, Tap Worm is not great. Looks like they're going for a 5-3. Are they leaving on four points? What's going on? We don't have a lot of plays here. It seems to be a theme of this deck. Yeah, it's it's pretty clumsy. It's a lot of expensive combo pieces and no way to get our economy early. And like rogue trading is not gonna help until we get our citadel down. They wanted to keep this from them, from us knowing it. Okay, here we're starting something. Okay. They call it resource, so we can avoid playing rogue trading. It's not good until we have citadel and power tap anyways, which is like a three card combo. We're showing our hand a bit here. We can always run HQ clear tag if we need to, and we're even on money, let alone we have three link. So James should put the name type of Asmari so it's easier to see. Yeah, they really should. It should be up here or something, because that's very easy to miss. It looks like we might get a single access here. The new sound's pretty bad. We pay one to break it with Trace if they don't boost. Or actually, it's free, I think. Exchange, no surprise there. And we'll just go ahead and click for credit. It might be a double trick of late play. There's not a lot of 4-2 agendas we're really worried about. NBN has some 4-2 agendas. It also actually might be a 5-3 deck that's running Puppet Master if they're on trick of light. That'd be kind of fun. But we've also seen not a lot of advanceable ice so far. I don't know whether we run HQ. Yeah, we'll expose that for sure. You can pay a credit if you want. So far we cost them like 3-4 credits. They're actually ex protecting that. I think that's something we definitely want to run. Oh, they're trick of lighting it. So they can score a Beal if they want. That's a good time for us to play the current now. Unless this is also agenda, which would be absolutely wild. Uh, I don't know what just happened. I have no idea what just happened. Uh, luckily, we have this. What just happened? We have three falsifieds. What do we want to expose here? What's going on? Whoa. 
calling I'm calling agenda on this one. It's a plan B. <laughs> All right, we're running HQ, aren't we? Holy shit, it's a plan B. What's this? I don't know. So that was a total waste of time in Temple. That's fantastic. Ghost Branch, Ghost Branch. That's awesome. They're playing Pan B. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. I'm glad they are. If you haven't seen this card, it's real cool. This is from uh, Order and Chaos. All right. We're hitting here. We're going to go ahead and uh, I think we're just going to trace this one. If we trace this one, one two, we pay two credits. Otherwise, we pay a bit more than that. So we might as well go trace that. I don't know if this is the second NGO front. It might be. But I don't think you take agendas off of that. So we're going to pay two. It's cheaper than breaking it. If they res the new sound, it's trace three, so we break it for free. So it's a pretty bad res. They're also running currents for sure if they're running new sound. That's also a reason why we don't want to play corporate grant from our hand. Oh, that doesn't happen. Oh, I'll take a credit back. We actually bypassed that ability. Thanks. Got it. Ace. Oh, it's an NGO front. NGO front. Okay, so they defused that situation. They have 11 credits now, so we're going to have to click for two. Uh, they did go ahead and raise the new sound. Uh, you can trace. Which is probably not great. We have three link here. Um, if they want to boost the trace heavily, we can always just clear, click for a credit. Uh, clear the tag, click for a credit. We still get a turning wheel counter, which is probably the best thing here. I'm really hoping that 419 make it's a trap a viable card. It's just not a good card. Like, second field is a good card in almost every matchup. It's a trap is just a bad ice. Uh, fucking hell, they just put all their money into that. So we don't have to worry about seed source or hard hitting news. So we're just going to take that, check out, remove the tag. There was a wee chance. We didn't make a successful run, which is kind of a bummer. But there's a wee chance that they had a, a psychic, what's it called? A quantum kitty in there. It makes sense with the plan B and that, but not that most sense. Uh, the tap is probably going to be bad for the rest of the game, considering they don't have a lot of money. It doesn't seem like a money rich deck. They've gone through two NGO fronts. No other economy cards. So I'm actually going to throw out the tap worm. And now next turn we just run R&D. This card's only good once we have Citadel. We know there's agendas in here. They also should pre-res this plan B for what it's worth. Because they know for sure that we're on um, that we're on uh, Expose. It's so fun to say. I hear you on that. It is really fun to say. So we only have to turn this off if we choose to. We can just run R&D likely and turn it off anyways. We draw into a hedge fund to be good. Fester again doesn't really do anything. <coughs> they can go ahead and res if they want. We have a chance of hitting a current here, an agenda here, and turning it off right away. I think we know one of these to be an IP block, which is free break if they don't. Draw for Citadel taps. I think that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of this turn because these cards aren't doing it for us. I think actually seeing two here is probably reasonable. We know they have one agenda in HQ. Hedge fund off the top. Endless EULA, which is fine. So even if we double install here, they can still... Uh... Yeah, we don't. Sneak door. Uh, not great. Like, they're going to have the hedge fund no matter what. So let's just take a credit. This is going into the bin. This card represents a lot of money, but I think by the time we're set up anyways... Like, that's what I don't like about this card. It's only good once you're set up with Citadel and then power tap to some extent. But once we're at that point anyways, like, we're, we're, we're fine. Because we can make a billion money running. Any of these ice gives us money. So I don't even think we need this one. This is the card we were testing though. So I kind of want to keep it. Uh, just on that basis. And I think all these other cards are... Like actually the Sneaker Bait is a really good play right now. We're throwing this one out unfortunately. We have two more in the deck. So we'll hopefully find it. Yeah, we'll be fine. Ender, what's up? Sneaker is great. They almost certainly have an agenda in hand. Exactly. I think you're right. They're at 13 though. And we can see two cards in HQ. The problem is, though, we know they have an exchange. So if they hit a sea source, it's pretty bad. They have nothing to sea source us. I think we can just go sneak door. It turns off the current, likely. And then we can see two cards, and it'll probably be good enough. Throw that Femme out. I like the Femme. We probably don't need it, though. You're right. It's good against Raven. So we hit the QPM. That's a pretty bad plan B target, but we called it. It made sense with the new sound. And then we're going to hit an exchange right there. Oh, it's a degree mill. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So we got to shuffle two cards back. Let's put the Nexus away. No, we, we're done with the sneak door there. Uh, we have another Maxwell James in deck. I think the turning wheel actually we can throw away. We have another turning wheel, and I love the Maxwell James. The link seems so good in this matchup. And we're now up on four points, which means we're on game point. This is an exchange, so we don't have to worry about it unless they top deck, like, 
I don't know, hard hitting news. But we also have three link, so I think we can probably be fine. Another faster is useless. We turned off the current. They still called oh they called program that turn. We gave them two credits. Did not even pay attention to that in slightest. Uh faster seems bad. And we don't want to play a current because we can get through news hound otherwise. Can you run R&D make them res? We, they have 15 credits now. We have less than them. It's probably not the best thing we want to do. What it's worth, we also could have diffused the plan B, but oh, current again. Okay, well, we can play that game. So they named event. So if we play this, we give them money. So it basically counters everything else. Turn scarcity off. That might be necessary. Turning wheel comes back. Turning tap was a mistake, yeah, but we weren't expecting them to do double gamble. We have, or hedge fund. We have two more in the deck, though. Uh, we're drawing some bad stuff. We can solve both of those. I think we got to put the squeeze on somewhere. Oh, we have a Maxwell. What are we doing? Oh, that was a mistake. I, we have to install something now. Oh boy, that was a misplay. All right, so we might ping him for one credit a turn. I don't know, we don't have enough cheap installs in places. Uh, the Exposed, we're also getting very little value from it. It's an endless EULA, that's a really bad res on Archives. Like them spending six on that is fine for us. Back to Thursday streams, feels Batman single pay. what's up? How's it going? Thursday stream is what's comfortable. Feels right, you know, almost the end of the week, just a Friday after. Feels really good. Double Ice Archives. Interesting. They call an event, which is fine. We have the turtle that makes the in the it makes IP block really bad. <coughs> but it makes um it makes the exposes relevant. They have 14 credits though. I want to install something here. It seems really rough. Like, we have no money. Maybe throwing out all the rogue trading and all the other stuff mattered, but... I don't know. Like, they had 15 credits, but I imagine if we just installed it, they would purge, and then next turn they would do double sure gamble. Like, you don't double sure gamble into that. Okay, lose a credit. Yay. One uninstall turning wheel? Uh, we are. We will. I don't want to go down to one credit. It seems really bad. As long as we have a modicum of credits, we're contesting things with... Uh, with um, Nexus, when we have one credit and a turning wheel, it's really no value. We probably shouldn't have installed that. IP block, mind you, also. We break that for free unless they boost. Mmm, mmm. Beer water. That's a delicacy nowhere, really. We also can't get our, our tapworms off. Maybe that double ice there was good. But like, uh, Citadel Sanctuary, Power Tap, those are all be good draws here. That's good, right? We need to get into Central Server. We can for sure get into HQ. How good is it going to be for us is a weird question. I think we just click for four. I don't know if we want the Amakua this game. It seems like it won't be necessary. They have two IP blocks on servers that we want to run. We have two more Amakuas in the deck. I'm not sure I want it. I'm not sure we want it. Oh, man. We've been playing like pretty no eating only stream. I need to make dinner, but I really want to watch the stream. I'm at a crossroads. No pain, no gain. Sad, what's up? Watch on your phone. Yeah. It's easy to watch a stream, right? We didn't install anything that turn, that kind of sucks. We always want to install the ding them the credits. Looks like the economy's not great. Yeah, pay a credit. Go ahead, pay a credit. I almost drank out of the bottle. I'm so sorry. Fem is the worst card in your hand? To some extent. Yeah, you're probably right. I know, but we have the thing. We have a uh, we have uh, the one that lets us install it for free. We found the third IP block, so I think actually Amaku was the worst card. No way you'll play Fem. We'll play Fem if we install it for free with uh, credit kiting. Citadel is here. Okay, that's a start. They have more credits than us. That cost them a credit. They still named Event, which is fun. Uh, so that's okay for us. So now we can start poking with our Nexus next turn. And then, um, we can remove the tag for free. Cause it's either they boost here, which is bad. We just need a power tap. We're probably fine. New sound has an ETR now. It does, but, oh yeah, right. We can't run HQ. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Can you watch that one on your phone? The cracks would be tiny and unrecognizable. I'll narrate everything. If you need dinner, I'll do it. I'll do it. Get yeah, down so when they're installing you get counters on it. I just don't want to run into IP block, you know? 
I guess we always can next this one IP block. Maybe it wasn't the worst. All right, we're running R&D. <laughs> I think this is an IP block. I'm pretty confident of that, so I'm not worried about it. It's just this ice. We can always nexus it. If they spend money on the link trace, mm, good. It's a turnpike. I'm going to go ahead and nexus that. Score feels flooded to me. Yeah, it does. And it looks like they're playing weird combo stuff. I just... I don't know. I just want to get this down. Trace three. We'll pay two. So they boost this by two. It's fine. Because they pay two on this. They're just spending money. If you're narrating, we just dramatically read all the flavor text and appropriate voices. It's possible. I don't know what Guru sounds like. Ah, uh, Trace. Most reporting these days can be done by AI. We just need the talent for the name recognition. All right, this is free. Seems like a, a, a strange res. We get to install this. They call it resource. We got three link we're going through. They might be flooded. They're running like an interesting agenda suite. It might be a lot of three pointers. There's a chance I actually don't aren't even flooded. Uh, we get the single access here. There's a chance we win. Hit the degree mill. Ah, oh, yeah, we win. Okay, uh, good game. We did very little. Admittedly, they did very little. But, um, yeah, this deck's not doing it for me, VK. How am I playing it wrong? Thanks, you too. Who's <laughs> Hannah's run? Do your best Morgan Freeman. For, I'm not. I can't. I'm not doing that. All right, well, can't say we did anything particularly flashy there. So this deck doesn't do anything until you draw your power taps, really. Otherwise, it's just kind of like a, a weaker Nexus deck, and our power taps are this many cards away. And we don't have draws. Like, we don't have card draw. Oh, we do. It's the bottom two cards. Oh, okay, never mind. We do have card draw. I forgot about that, but like, I don't know. You're playing it wrong, but that's okay. I'm probably playing it wrong. Can you elaborate a bit, VK? Yeah, no, single bait. We have not seen the deck master yet again. I'm suspicious it might be Patrick. Might not be Patrick. Yeah, I don't know. But like, we could have smashed into things. I guess we could have played the power tab, but it basically buys us a turn because they purge. I don't know. I don't know. This deck doesn't have Underworld either. No, it doesn't. It's meant to be a more aggressive taps deck. That's how VK and Twitch chat has been selling it. Uh, but Fester's not aggressive. This card's far from aggressive. So I don't know. You get Amakua down. No slots for drug dealers? You could. Patrick, whatever. Hey, bud, what could you make me suspect me? I don't know. You had it up, but you threw out important cards. I don't know. Amaku against IP block seems so bad. And, like, if they had more money, like, if their deck had a better economy, they would just pay a credit every time for the expose. So, I don't know. Yeah, the fem didn't matter, but, like, I don't think any card we threw out mattered. Like, we would never rogue trading. We would start rogue trading now, actually, but we have two more of those. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'll play this more at some point. I have no doubt. I'll play against it, more likely. Um, That's all for tonight, yo. Thanks so much for dropping by. I'm a bit under the weather. Had a long day. So, 11.48. That's actually not even cutting it early. Uh, Yeah, I understand, VK. You clear the tag for free, for sure. But we needed that thing. We never got it down. Like, we had Citadel for one turn. Do you think it could just go full tagging me? 100% not. Well, against that deck, it has Exchange, which is pretty rough. But, like... The deck's economy is based off of power tap, which is a resource, so probably can't go tag me. And usually Amaku is big enough that you can break it. I could see that, but then they just purge. Like, I'd purge and lose two credits, it doesn't matter. It also gets through the tap worm. Feel better, thank you, Paglos. Um, good night, Andre. Good night, hey, Julian, Dr. Apathy. Have a good night. Thanks for, for hanging out. Well, at least I made it this time for the end of the stream. Thank you, it's always my pleasure. Good streamer, so I've been trolling. You weren't trolling at all, man. Um, ask all the questions you want. That's all. We'll be back next week. We should have some unboxing coming out next week. A new data pack just came out today. If you're not familiar, at least in North America, Whispers and Nadabale. Not sure how to say that name right. We'll figure it out by then. Otherwise, if you're in Montreal, come down to the Randolph Pub on Monday. The Randolph in the quarter, the Latin Quarter by Barry Ucam Metro between Ucam and Sherbrooke. We're having a game night kit Monday night. It'll be a lot of fun. Otherwise, regionals were announced, I believe, in the Montreal area. We have one in Montreal. It's July 28th. Can someone correct me that? Has that been formally announced yet? Uh, just mumble your way through it. And we also have a regional, I believe, in Quebec City. Their first ever regional, which is June 16th. Which I don't think I'll be able to go to because I'll be at E3 this year. So, like Army of Darkness. Um, 
I believe those numbers are right. If not, we'll say them with more clarity in the near future. If you ever have a cool place to come see in the summer, Montreal is dope as hell. July 28th also means it's probably around the time of Coachella. It's not Coachella, Oshiaga, which is a music festival, and or the Jazz Festival. And it's probably a bit too late after Just for Laughs. But if you have any excuse to come down from Montreal for Netrunner or whatever, you should try it out. The city is absolutely beautiful. Um, that's all for me. Thanks so much for dropping by. Thanks for Pat. Thanks to all the people we played games against with and spectators and everyone in chat. I'll see you hopefully in the week. Toronto Regional is July 21st. That's going to be Netrunner in July. Oh, shit. That's two weeks in a row. Toronto will be the testing ground. Montreal will be where we prove it. Vicky Singh liberated Chella in chat. Liberated Chella is real good. It's real good. I like it a lot. Um, dope. That's good to know actually about Toronto. All right. That's all. Have a good night, everyone.